Me too. Okay. All right. That's good. That takes some stress off. So, um, did you you told Mike, right? You yeah. Checked uh, in. Or? Yeah. They they confirmed. I emailed them. Henry called them, and I emailed them. And they emailed me back. They understood. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Very good. All right. Thanks so much, Peter. Hi. Your phone number eighty ending in eight seventy six. You have your hand up. Peter, this is Sean McCarthy. So that you know that this is the number I'm calling from this evening. I'm watching everybody online, but I'm calling you from my phone. Thank you for letting us know, Sean. Well, you're very welcome. And how are you this evening? Excellent. I've been working on this all day. Excellent. Excellent. You've been working on the railroad. Yep. 15 documents to share. You're, you're, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. I'll see you soon. Okay, let's start screen sharing. All right, there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna go off off of. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna mute myself. I bet we have a hundred attendees at this meeting. Wow. Okay. Hi, Lauren and Joyce. How are you guys this evening? And Gina, you guys are on time. That's good for you. Are you, are you going to do it uh, on the computer or the phone? Okay. Paul okay. Lawler here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Peter, Joyce, Lauren, and I think I saw Gina there for a minute. Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to. Do you hear me? Paul Lawler, I can hear you. I'm trying to, I have this stupid video preview screen open. It won't let me shut it. I may have to go out and back. Throw it, try throwing it against the wall once. <laughs> That's what I feel like doing. It's so annoying. I don't know why it's doing this, it's weird. Hi, if you're an elect, if you're a representative of one of our elected officials, could you raise your hand so that I can identify you on the attendee list? 
Um, Peter, can you hear me? Yeah. Is there anything? Um, okay, I have... hang, hang on one second. I'm getting a call. Right there. Here, I'm, I'm just going to email you. Um, Peter? I'm, I'm back, Lauren. Um, I have a... Um... On the Zoom platform, it's it's saying I have this screen. It doesn't allow me to see you. It's saying join with. Typically, I tap on that and it goes away, but it's not. So I'm wondering, do you have me open to video? Because usually you don't, right? I see you. You see me. Yeah. So I don't know why this is frozen on this screen. It's weird. Um, I'm gonna have to go out and come back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lauren, we've been seeing you the whole time. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I guess I'm gonna do that. Okay. Uh, participant whose phone number ends in 483, can you let me know who you are? Sure, it's Karen. Okay. I just want to rename everybody because we have so many people. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I have I have two Joyce Fletchers on. Uh, if Joyce sent you an invite. Will you, uh, Rick, I'm going to ask you to unmute and let me know who you are. I have three people identified as Joyce Fletcher. Could you identify yourself so I can rename you properly? If you look at your screen and you're identified as Joyce Fletcher and you're not Joyce Fletcher, could you uh, let me know who you are so I can rename you properly? This is Lauren, you see me as me, right? 
That's me, isn't it? I'm, I'm Veronica from Council Member Blumenfield's office. Okay. Peter, this is Alex Farusati. Do you see my name? Hang on. Yes. Yeah, Veronica said, you, Veronica has got my name. Yeah, somebody else has your name too. I just fixed Veronica's. Alex, yeah, we see you, Alex Farasati. We still have two Joyce Fletchers. Okay, great, thank you. I'm the Joyce that has the pink screen. I think we may be just down. I think you're the only one left. Then this is ja Jacob Berger with the council of. Okay. We were all sent the same link, and apparently that link. Yeah, that's that's what, ha that's what happened. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I sent you guys my link, so that's what happened. So the council member will probably have your name as well. <laughs> Any minute now. That makes sense. That's why I want to get people's names and emails and send them proper links. Are you going to do this? Um, yeah, eventually. Thank you. Well, we probably back up. Yeah, probably a good idea. Thanks. Can we hear you? Can we hear you? Hmm? Can we hear you? Hmm? Yes. Peter, how many uh, board members do we have? Uh, Probably about 18 or 19. Oh, okay, good. We have a lot of we have a lot of applicants for presentation. And we have okay. 40 we have 42 attendees. Mm-hmm. We're so popular. Do you want me to uh, promote Julia Ween to a participant? Yes. Julia Ween and Nathan Pope. I think Nathan's already on. Okay. There are a lot of joy. You sent a lot of invites out because there's a lot of joy. No, <laughs> just, just to the council office. Hello. Um, the meeting is starting, so I have to go, but how are you? Yeah, yeah. I have to um, change the date because tomorrow is the Veterans Day. Lauren, hold on. Yes, you're un you're unmuted. Just wanted to let you know. Well, you have a quorum. Do you think all the board members are here? Uh, well, it's 636 and you have a quorum. I don't see Hutan. I'm here. Can okay, you here? you are. Well, we've got a lot of people on. Sorry, Hutan. We have 30, oh. We've got, uh, got 86 people on. The new record. I know, but I need to know how many board members we have. Well, we'll know that when we take roll, won't we? Okay. I'm going to give everybody mm, three or four more minutes and then we'll start.
you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Shepard, are you here? I am. Hello. Oh, welcome. Okay, so I think we'll get started. Uh, Peter, can you scroll up on the screen? Thank you. This is the special meeting of the Woodland Hills Wonder Center Neighborhood Council full board, Tuesday, November 10th, 6.30 p.m. Um, in conformity with the governor's executive order in 2920 and due to concerns over COVID-19, the Woodland Hills Wonder Center Neighborhood Council meeting will be conducted entirely telephonically. Every person wishing to address the neighborhood council must dial plus one six six nine nine hundred six eight three three and enter webinar ID nine six four nine three seven one two one two seven and then press the pound sign to join the meeting. Instructions on how to sign up for public comment will be given to listeners at the start of the meeting. The public is requested to dial star nine when prompted by the presiding officer to address the board on any agenda item before the board takes action on any item. If you would like uh, to see a copy of the agenda and all of the support documents, you can go to www.whcouncil.org, click on the calendar page and on this date, and you will see the agenda and all the support documents. The meeting is now called to order at 640. We will now say the Pledge of Allegiance. Paul Lawler, are you here? Yeah, thank you, Joyce. Yes, Paul Lawler here. Thank you for the honor and Hopefully everybody will observe a moment of silence tomorrow for Veterans Day. Don't forget it, it's very important. Hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, United States of America, of America. And to the republic, the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For everyone. Nationalism is bad. Thank you, Paul. On November 11th, we recognize the heroes amongst us. They are the men and women who have served in all branches of our armed forces. They are the veterans of the United States military. And for all that they have done and sacrificed for the rest of us, we are forever grateful. There's no way to thank our veterans for everything they sacrifice for our freedom. But on Veterans Day and every day, we say, we say thank you to all our service men and women, both past and present. We also take this moment to thank our veteran board members and stakeholders for their service. Now we will have the roll call vote. Karen, are you here? Or is Komal Preet, our secretary, is she available tonight? Komal Preet, are you present? As Kamal Preet is not present, the Assistant Secretary, Karen DiBiase, uh, will take a roll call. Karen, are you available? Yes, this is Karen DiBiase. I'm available to take the minutes and roll call. Thank you. Do you want me to read the name? Yes, please. All right, this is attendance for the board meeting November 10th, 2020. This is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. Adam Quantz. Aaron Quantz is here. Aaron, thank you. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase is here. Pomperit. Pomperit. Not here. Tamara Johnson. 
Mara Johnson, not here. Brian Drapkin. Brian Drapkin's present. Thank you, Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler present. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy is present. Ray Cole. Ray Cole will be late tonight. He's in a meeting. Uh, Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean. Absent. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson is here. Thank you. John Sandy Campbell. John Sandy Campbell is here. Thank you. Alex Farsetti. Alex Farsetti is present. Hey, Alex, you will be voting tonight uh, since Nancy McLean is not here. Don okay. Patterson. Don Patterson is here. Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson is here. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin's here. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss is here. Okay, Dina, as an alternate, you will not be voting tonight. Uh, Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher is present. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman is here, present. Gilbert Lebon. Gilbert Lebon is present. Keith Klein. Keith Klein, present. Uh, August Stirrer. August Stirrer is present. What? Okay, August, uh, as an alternate, you will not be eligible to vote tonight. Ginny, Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand. I see her. Okay, I'm going to mark her no until she checks in. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, present. Who, mm -hmm. Tan Hermosian? Tan Hermosian, present. Tim Root. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman is present. Gina Thornburg. Gina Thornburg is here. Hey, and Gina's alternate, you won't be able to vote tonight. Um, Andrew McNeil. Andrew McNeil is here. Okay, has... Um, has Ginny Sand returned? I think she's having technical issues. She's on the screen and she was raising her hand. I think maybe she her mic isn't working. She is here though. I see her on the screen. So counter is present. She's trying to raise her hand, but it's just not working, it looks like. Okay. Uh, it looks like Nancy's also here, but she's in the attendees. I'm going to lower all the hands. Uh, Nancy, and if, it, if Nancy is here, raise are your you hand. Able to meet? Raise your hand, Nancy, and I'll, I'll promote you to panelist. Press star nine. Or press the raise hand if you're on the computer. Um, while Peter is getting Jenny uh, Sand and Nancy McLean uh, promoted, we're going to move on with the agenda. We have a long agenda tonight. Yeah, and I'm, I, would, and I'm, I would just recommend that they both sign off and then re-sign back in and raise their hand. Okay, well, we'll let you y'all deal with that off uh, screen. Um, 
So next we have public announcements. Uh, are there any public announcements from the office of council member Bob Bloomingfield? Okay, there being none, are there any other um, office, of, are there any people from offices of other local and state officials? I see one hand raised that ends in 659. I'm gonna ask you to, I'm gonna allow you to, you have to unmute yourself. I gotta go back down. Hi, Hi. Is, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, raising my hand for this. I'm raising my hand for public comment and um, uh, motion one. Okay, and we'll everyone, get... can everyone please keep your hand down until we get to whatever item it is that you wish to speak on. Everyone will be given the opportunity to speak, but we need to move through the agenda as listed. Okay, thank you. Um, Karen, I see you've raised your hand. Can, is there a problem? Uh, there's not a problem, but I just want to announce that we have 24 members uh, for the Neighborhood Council. That is a quorum that just needs to be announced into the minute. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It's nice that we have everyone here and we should welcome our uh, newest in member, uh, our youth member, Andrew, McNeil tonight. So welcome, Andrew. And welcome back, August. Okay, so are there any other public announcements from local organizations? And this, these are announcements not having to do with items on the agenda. I see and Olga has raised her hand, but I have a feeling she wants to talk about item one. Olga, do you uh, have... Uh, yes, I just wanted to make an announcement actually as part of the organization Street Watch. Okay. Um, we're expanding our Valley presence right now. We're working with the West Valley People's Alliance to make sure that unhoused folks are protected. And I just wanted you all to be aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we will have public comment on items not on the agenda. Because of the length of our agenda tonight, public the public excuse me, public comment will be limited to one minute for both the public and board members. Um, and so does anyone have public comment by members of the public on, uh, on an item that is not on the agenda? I see two hands raised. Okay. If your number ends, this is for items not on the agenda. If your phone number ends in 693, you can unmute yourself and talk. Hello, this is Chris Rowe. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make this very fast. I just want you to know at 6.45 PM, the city of Los Angeles Notify LA sent out a letter that says COVID-19 rates are increasing in your community. Please wear a mask and social distance. And this is for specifically for our, our West Valley area. But what I wanted to ask or was to find out is if, if any board members is gonna give, gonna give a report. I was unable to attend the LA Unified School District meeting today relative to the school sites being proposed as affordable housing for teachers and the public. And I want to know if anybody could report on that later this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Can anybody hey. hear me? This is Jenny. Hello? Jenny? Uh, yes, this is Jenny. I had to call in. I'm, I have a new computer. I'm having some mic problems. So yeah, we, we hear you fine. We hear okay, you fine. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? I have uh, four more hands. Okay. Zach, go ahead. So Hi, uh, my name is Zach Vallette. I'm a Woodland Hills Warner Center stakeholder. Um, and I'd like to give public comment on the process of the creation of tonight's agenda. Um, first, I'd like to say, I think item two was, or item one was ran through to the general board meeting. I'm, without... I'm, I'm sorry, Zach, but that is a comment on an item on the agenda. That is not we a have... comment. That is not a comment on the agenda. agenda. Zach, these are for comments on items that are not on the agenda. 
If you would like to make a comment about an item that is on the agenda, you can make a comment when that agenda item is called. Okay, so. Okay, I have a Carmen Elena De La Luz. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up what an important issue homelessness is in our community and that many people uh, want to solve it by criminalization. And I I'm would... sorry, ma'am, but it sounds like you're commenting on item one. You can do that whenever item one is called. Are there any comments about an item that is not on the agenda? Okay, we have four more hands. These are for items not on the agenda. It's not to discuss item one. Or any other item on the agenda. Phone number ending in 914. You have to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Caleb Crowder. I'm uh, also a stakeholder. I work with the West Valley People's Alliance and everyone in. And I wanted to specifically comment about just process in general, since it seems like we're getting caught up a little bit in semantics. I think what folks are trying to communicate is that in general, it doesn't feel like really good democratic practice to be put in, putting items on an agenda that did not move through your committees. For a couple of different reasons one of which being you have members stakeholders from your communities who are representing different neighborhoods that sit on committees that don't have an opportunity because they haven't run an election or what have you to be on your board so i think it what people are trying to communicate before they got cut off is that it would be much better practice for you to actually have items move through committees so people can actually see them and vet them and understand what it is but also part of the issue is that you're putting items on that you didn't draft like you're putting items on the agenda that someone asked you to put on there and you as a body are supposed to be holding council members and other officials accountable. So I think that's where the concern is coming from. That's what I think people are trying to communicate with you. Okay, that's one minute. Uh, are there any other comments on items not on the agenda? Uh, there's five more hands. Albert. Hi everyone, I'm Albert. Um, I'm a member of the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. I'm also a community, community interest stakeholder of the Woodland Hills. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to um, promote the ad hoc committee on police reform. It's a committee uh, part of the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council with the passing of Measure J and our, uh, the city's efforts to defunding the police. I would just like to welcome everyone to come to our next meeting, December 14th <laughs> at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. And if you could email me that information, I could get it out to the board. Okay. Uh, Jamie Penn. <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm a member of the Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council. Um, I'm also a member of DSALA, uh, which has a heavy volunteer presence uh, in the neighborhood. Um, just wanted to invite people. Um, we are holding open training uh, for neighborhood council members um, and possibly helping organize slates to run for neighborhood council elections. And I just wanted to make sure um, that the board was aware of that resource, uh, as well as um, it appears we have a sizable crowd <laughs> for, this, um, for this particular meeting. Um, but thank you so much, um, and I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you, Jamie, and if you can email me that information. Okay. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean, you have to unmute yourself. I'm here. <laughs> okay. It's Nancy, I was just trying, the unmute didn't come up until just now. Okay, and then I have three more, phone number ending in 213. Okay. Phone number and in two one three. Go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Two one three. Um, I don't know. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Um, phone number ending in 914. Go ahead. You want him to unmute, I'm unmuted. Phone number ending in 213, go ahead. You have one minute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, my name is Pilar Schiavo. I'm from the West Valley People's Alliance. I just wanted to announce um, that the West Valley People's Alliance will be hosting an event on December 12th called Go ahead, unmute yourself. Hi, sorry, I somehow got muted. Um, so we just wanted to invite um, the council to attend and be a part of that. Um, there will be clergy, faith leaders, and we're bringing together um, people of different political perspectives as well to discuss homelessness. Um, and so hope people will join us on December 12th and you can go to wvpeople.org to find out more information and sign up with us, thanks. Thank you. Uh, last one, phone number ending in 914, the second time, unmute yourself. Okay, they haven't, you can press star six on your phone if you're on the telephone to unmute yourself. Other, okay, go ahead. Oh, I already spoke, I think, I think you okay. had, somehow I got put in the queue again. Oh, what's your name? Caleb. Okay, thank you. We're, we're done with comment. Okay, thank you very much. We will now move to organization, operations, policies, and procedures. Um, approval of the minutes for board meeting October 14th, 2020. Uh, hopefully all the board members have had an opportunity to uh, read the minutes. If not, we're going to scroll through them here. Did, did you ask for public comment from board members? Board members are not allowed to make public comment. That's not true. I've seen it done. <laughs> I, I don't understand I'm, what I'm you're sorry. saying. I'm sorry, but an email was sent out to the entire board uh, referencing um, the information from the city attorney in Empower LA. If you wish to discuss it tomorrow, point, you can point email. Point of order. Point of order, please. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Miss. Joyce, you have to unmute yourself. How did I get muted? Unmuted. Okay. An email was sent out yesterday discussing public comment by members of the board. Members of the board do not make public comment. Point of order to the parliamentarian, please. To the parliamentarian, point, point of order. I'm sorry. Point of procedure, please. You are please. interrupting the board meeting and please stop interrupting the board meeting. To the parliamentarian, is, point of procedure. Okay, this is Don Patterson. What's your point of procedure? The question is, in past board meetings, board members have made public comment at the beginning of the meeting. The question is, when did that rule change? And are we allowed to do that? We've done it in previous meetings. Thank you. This is Don, you are correct that in all previous meetings, um, board members have uh, made public comments during the public comment period. Um, Joyce sent out an email to all board members um, with information from the city attorney's office that attempted to outline and um, clarify the purpose of public comment. So it might be something we wanna put on a future agenda to discuss in more detail and review with a representative from the city. Thank is, you. Is um, Vanessa Serrano here tonight? 
I am. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Vanessa Serrano with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Um, we did provide, uh, we did reach out to the city attorney's office um, to get a little bit more clarification on public comment provided by board members at neighborhood council meetings. And the advice we were giving to provide the neighborhood council is that board members should not be engaging in public comment, uh, period, um, during a, a meeting where they're sit a sitting board member, um, because uh, public comment is time that's afforded to members of the public and not sitting board members. Um, board members are able to provide their comments uh, during board discussion on matters that have been agendized. Um, and if for any reason there's an item that has not been agendized and a board member wants to provide, uh, wants to speak on that topic, then uh, the recommendation is that they, they follow um, the procedure to request that the item be placed on a future agenda um, by whether it's the executive committee um, by the um, agenda setting uh, procedure in the bylaws. So the advice is that uh, board members uh, should not provide public comment during board meetings. Thank you. Okay, so. The minutes, approval of the minutes. This is Heath Klein. Okay, thank, uh, thank Do we have a, so has everyone looked at the minutes? Joyce, okay. quick question on the minutes. If yes, the, sir. I, if, if there's a correction, when do you want it? Um, as, um, okay. So has everyone looked at the minutes? So okay, this, I is make... Don, this is Don. Um, there, Joyce needs to call the item, then there needs to be a motion and a second, then there could be a discussion about our corrections recommended. Correct. So um, I make a motion that the board um, approves the minutes for, P Peter, can you go up again? For October 14th. 14th. Is there a second? Heath Klein seconds the approval of the minutes. Uh, now, can we get comment from board members uh, on any comments or changes, deletions, et cetera, for the minutes? Marty has his hand up. Yes, Marty. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. What item? Uh, yeah, it indicates that I was late. However, I think that's that's uh, should be changed to technical difficulties. I, I was on time. I just could not get on and you had to send me a special link. So I don't think it's accurate. So I'm requesting that it be changed to technical difficulty. Okay, Sean McCarthy has his hand up. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Sean. Sean. Okay, no, Sean. Bill Anderson has his hand up. Yes, uh, item number four, uh, governance committee motion by Don Patterson. The vote is incorrect. I did not abstain, I voted no. Item number four, appointment of youth member. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, Karen, did you get that? Karen? Sorry, I was muted. This is Karen DiBiazzi. So Bill Anderson, you're saying you voted no instead of abstain? That's correct. All right, I will double check my notes on it, but I'm marking it on this page. Well, I know what I said, so. Okay, thank you all. Okay, John, Are there any I'm, other? John Sandy Campbell okay. has her hand up. Yes, Thank you uh, for item number six on that. Um, yes, item number six, I voted no. I stated absolutely not. I did not agree to remove uh, Ms. Bath from her position. So I voted no. Thank you. Thank you. You wanna take a vote on the amended motion? Um, th Peter, this is Don Patterson. I would like to make a substitute motion to approve the minutes reflecting the, amend the amendments that were presented by fellow board members. 
Pete Klein second. Okay, we have to vote on the substitute motion. Karen, do you want to call a roll? Yes, this is Karen DiBiase. Uh, Aaron. Aaron Quant. I Aaron see a lot Quant of people no. who need to be unmuted. Aaron Quant, can you say it again, please? Aaron Quant votes no. Just to clarify, this is an amendment to accept the uh, request by those board members to amend the minutes. Uh, Joyce, this is Don. My substitute motion is to approve the minutes um, with the corrections board members. Okay. So that would just require. Who is it listening? <laughs> okay. So, Aaron, you voted no on that. That's a wetty. And the feeling, that's what we were missing with the old boy, is a feeling, a kind of connection you get with the surface beneath. Mm -hmm. You want to continue the roll call? Yes, please. Can yes, we? Yes, I was just hearing talking in the background. I didn't know if it was for the meeting or not. Okay, this is Karen DiBiase. I'm going to continue with the roll call vote on this. Um, I am voting no. Uh, Brian, how do you vote? Yeah. Brian Drapping votes yes for the approval of the amended minutes. Uh, Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes yes to yes. Uh, Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy. You're muted. He needs to unmute himself. Did you even, did you send her already? Okay, I'm gonna come back to Sean McCarthy. I was gonna, I put Nancy, Nancy McLean. McLean. I think we're supposed to send her already. Nancy McLean votes yes. Okay. Did you send her already though? No. Angela Dawson. Just go into your email, copy the link, and put it in. Angela Dawson votes yes. What are we voting on? Sandy Campbell. What? John Sandy Campbell votes yes. Okay, Alex, because Nancy is here, you are now an alternate and cannot vote. Don Patterson. Okay. Don Patterson votes yes. <laughs> Can you please Don. say that again for me? Don Patterson votes Don yes. Don Bill Patterson Anderson. votes yes. Thank you. Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson votes yes. Uh, Marty Lipkin. Marty votes. Lipkin votes yes to amended mess, uh, minutes. Uh, Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes to the amended minutes. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes to the amended minutes. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon votes yes. Keith Klein. Keith Klein votes yes. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher votes yes. Uh, Hutan Hermosian. You have to unmute Hutan. Hutan Hermosian votes yes. Thank you. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes yes. Andrew McNeil. Andrew McNeil votes yes. Okay. Uh, let's go back then to Sean McCarthy. Are you now available? Sean McCarthy? You have to unmute Sean.
Sean McCarthy, you are muted. On the computer, tell him. Perhaps he could hold up a sign. Continue with the roll call, please. That's the last one. I'm just waiting for Sean. Mark Sean is not available. Out of the room. He's not responding when I asked him to unmute. That's fine. Okay, let's move on with the agenda. The next item on the agenda is officer's reports. President Joyce Fletcher, uh, the 2021 uh, Woodland Hills Wonder Center Neighborhood Council election will be held on May 4th, 2021. For those uh, board members and for uh, the stakeholders listening, uh, the candidate registration began, begins on January 2nd, 2021. Uh, we will be uh, providing information on our website and through our outreach to stakeholders and board members um, as soon as we get all of the documents from Empower LA. We will also at some point uh, around the 1st of January uh, be providing a uh, forum uh, for uh, stakeholders and board members where we will um, have extensive discussion about how you can register to be a candidate. Thank you. Vice President Shepard Kaufman. Uh, Shepard Kaufman, uh, very limited. Um, there has been some updates from uh, Don regarding Plum and the Plum Committee is aware of the new requirements. So they'll be working on that and we're waiting for information from Vanessa, unless she has it tonight, um, <laughs> on when the next training sessions will be available for the Plum Committee. Uh, in addition, there'll be some stuff coming up that'll be coming out in our email blasts related to items going on around the community. So I just say, look out for those and include a uh, street safety related survey and some other information. And that is it. Treasurer Paul Aller. Paul Lawler here. The MERS came out late this month, so next month we'll be voting on two MERS. Other than that, everything is fine. Thank you. Secretary Komalpreet Bath. Okay. Parliamentarian Don Patterson. Uh, this is Don Patterson. I have nothing to report. Thank you very much. That ends officer reports. Um, Presentation by the Office of Council Member Bob Bloomingfield, uh, Tim Glick. Uh, Tim Glick will uh, not be making this presentation uh, tonight. We will now move on to a uh, presentation by Warner Connects, the Warner Center TMO. If you could move the screen down a little bit, Peter. Uh, Julia Ween is the executive director and Nathan Pope is the TDM coordinator. The Warner Center Transportation Management Organization, TMO, Warner Connects is a membership based organization focused on reducing drive alone trips and encouraging use of alternative modes such as biking, walking, riding, transit, and ride sharing. Uh, is uh, Nathan Pope and Julia Ween available? We are here, thanks so much. Hi Nathan, nice to see you. Um, so if you could get their presentation up on the screen. Okay, Nathan. Wonderful, thank you so much Joyce and thank you so much to the board for having us this evening. We know you have a packed agenda so we'll go quickly and we'll try to save some time at the end for questions. Um, if you want to go on to the next slide, um, we're Warner Connects. And I just wanted to provide a quick introduction to what a TMO is and what we do at Warner Connects. Um, I know some of you may have heard of us before, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to um, provide a more formal introduction. So if you want to go on to the next slide, we'll talk about what a TMO is. 
Um, a TMO is more commonly referred to as a transportation management organization, and TMOs really help manage the transportation needs of a community. Um, they work closely with developers, property managers, employers, residents, um, anyone you could think of to help reduce uh, local traffic congestion, um, and they provide transportation solutions to employees, residents, and visitors. Um, we do a lot of improving awareness on transportation options um, through marketing campaigns, events, communications, and then we do some advocacy work as well. Um, if you want to go on to the next slide, in Warner Center, um, your TMO is called Warner Connects. Um, we're a membership-based organization that was first established as a 501c4 in 1983, making it one of the nation's first TMOs. Um, back a couple years ago, the city of Los Angeles and LADOT um, initiated a plan to kind of refresh the TMO um, and to realign its services with uh, the mo mobility goals outlined in the Warner Center specific plan. Um, so we have representation from both the public and private sectors. Um, we're working collaboratively with, collaboratively with the council office, the city, um, to uh, really advance our goals, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Um, at Warner Connects, our goals are really to um, these bullet points here. We want to promote the awareness of mobility options to residents, um, workers, and visitors throughout Warner Center. We want to encourage use of alternative and sustainable commute modes like biking, walking, riding transit, or ride sharing instead of drive alone trips. Um, and we want to integrate emerging technologies with mobility as a service providers and communicate their value. Um, we also want to assist local businesses in complying with local and regional air quality and trip reduction regulations. Um, and then really we're all about building partnerships with local government agencies and community groups like this one. Um, on the next slide, um, we'll talk about who our team is. Um, you heard Joyce mention that Julia Ween is our executive director. Um, she's supported by um, Hank Kaplan and myself who are all on the call this evening. Um, and then we have an advisory board. Our advisory board is made up of local stakeholders who meet regularly um, and guide our organization. And then they provide insight from the local businesses um, and the development and residential community as well. So we have this really um, cross organizational insight, which is very helpful. On the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about who we serve. So technically our members are um, organizations like developers, property managers, employers, and HOAs. Um, once they become members, then we start providing benefits for um, residents, employees, and visitors. We also do kind of general community outreach and engagement as well, talking about different kinds of transportation options for everyone, not just our members. Um, more specifically on the next slide, um, we'll talk about businesses and employers and how we help them. We do a lot of compliance support. There's a series of um, regulations and ordinances that businesses have to follow to help reduce emissions and congestion, um, be that the Air Quality Management District's Rule 2202, um, any kind of commuter survey that employers may have to do, um, the City of Los Angeles' TDM ordinance, their Transportation Demand, Ord Transportation Demand Management Ordinance, and the Warner Center specific plan as well. Um, we also do transportation programs. We help out with things like guaranteed ride home programs or ride sharing assistance. And we do a ton of marketing. And I hope you guys will visit our website um, later today and check out some of the marketing and uh, communications that we put out. We do quarterly newsletters. We do education for employee transportation coordinators. Um, and then we do specific campaigns around things like fan pooling or bike share, um, or we do specific events around uh, ride share month or bike to work day or other similar campaigns. Um, we also do a lot of, well, pre-COVID, we do a lot of on-site one-on-one um, -on -one interactions, whether it be an employer or a community organization. Um, and then that ad advocacy, we do um, advocate for the mobility needs, our, needs of our businesses and our employers. So that's the business and employer side of things. If we go to the next slide, we'll talk about um, how we can help out residents and employees, more individuals. Um, we are happy to help plan individual trips. If you want to know anything about getting around Warner Center, please feel free to uh, shoot us an email, give us a call. Um, we have a trip planner on our website. So if you're curious about um, how you can get to uh, the mall using um, your bike, we can have a trip planner on our website that'll tell you the best way to do that. Um, and our website also has a, a lot of great information um, about transportation options. Um, we also have our social media accounts on our Twitter and our Instagram and our Facebook. If you're on any of those platforms, I encourage you to type in Warner Connects and give us a follow. Um, also, we do that advocacy piece again. Um, we're advocating for safe and pleasant transportation experiences for everyone, and we're working to bring uh, new mobility options uh, to Warner City, to the whole area, the whole region. Um, this can be things like transportation network companies, micro mobility, scooters, uh, on-demand shuttles, these type of things. And we want to bring those into the community um, in accordance with the city's goals and policies. 
So we couldn't talk about any of this if you go to the next slide without talking about uh, COVID-19. Um, we've had to adapt just like everyone has. So we've moved a lot of our in-person events to digital events. Uh, we've provided um, regular COVID transportation updates to all of our members and anyone who's subscribed to our newsletter, we do regular um, COVID updates on how the bus is um, being kept clean and safe, what your transportation options are during COVID. Um, we also have this walk audit tool that I'm going to talk a little bit more about in the uh, next couple slides. Um, and really, we've seen this kind of increase in active transportation. Active transportation is our word for biking, walking, any kind of active mode from getting one place to another, um, where people are going into the garage and finding their old bike um, and dusting it off, getting it repaired. And we're seeing a kind of a big spike in people walking and biking during COVID. Um, we're also going to be starting a micro mobility audit. Um, which is micromobility is our fancy word for um, kind of smaller, lightweight electric vehicles, be them scooters, mopeds, uh, e-bikes, and looking at kind of the infrastructure, the parking, um, the places to ride, all of that in relation to Warner Center um, and how we can maybe make some recommendation, recommendations and improvements. So that's coming up in the next month or so. Um, if we go on to the next one, um, I want to talk about this walk audit tool that we've developed. Um, if you are out in Warner Center and you do a lot of walking um, and you find something that's not great or something that's really good, we have this custom made uh, Warner Center tool that helps identify strengths and barriers to getting around on foot in Warner Center. So if you go to audit.warnerconnects.org, um, you can create a, an account really quick and then this map will pop up. You drop a pin on the map and then you can say what kind of observation this is. Is it a barrier? Is it a strength or is it an idea for something you have? You type a little um, information in there saying like, oh, this place is a great place to walk. There's lots of trees. I like walking here or, ooh, it's really sunny here. There's not, um, it's not a really good place to um, walk. It needs more shade. You can upload a picture and then your comment goes on the map and we can collect them. We can see what the trends are. We can see where there's a lot of, um, good stuff going on and there's a lot of places where we can make improvements. So um, next time you're out walking in Warner Center, please um, go onto your phone and just go to audit.warnerconnects.org um, and uh, make a couple observations. That would really help us out. Um, I think the next slide is just more about the walk audit. Yep, you can see you can just drop a, a pin on the map. You can confirm the location and add your observation. So that's all I have. The next slide is just questions. Um, and the slide after that is our contact information. I really appreciate um, having the time to chat with you this evening. I hope you visit our website. Um, please feel free to shoot me an email and I'm happy to answer a couple of questions, time permitting. Okay, Gina Thornburg has her hand up. Go ahead, Gina, you have one minute. Thank you, Peter. This is Gina Thornburg at Large Alternate. Nathan, thank you so much for being here. Um, so I have some questions and concerns. I do want to remind everybody that Warner's or that Woodland Hills is the hottest place in the city of LA. It hit 121 degrees on one of the days in August and many of us did not have power. So I want everybody to consider that it's not really a walkable place in the summer for many days of the summer. Uh, Woodland Hills is also the one of the oldest areas we have 31% of our population older than 55. So I wanna know what kind of um, transportation options you're going to have for seniors. Um, scooters aren't gonna work for them. Um, I also wanna ask about how rideshare applications are gonna articulate with your efforts because I know in the surrounding neighborhoods, a lot of people would rather use a rideshare app than um, considering that we have no shuttle buses. We have no That's shuttles. One minute. In. Thank you so much. Um, I think your, your comment about shade is um, absolutely heard. Shade is an essential transportation infrastructure. Um, so that's definitely something we're thinking about. Um, the other question was about uh, seniors and staying active. Um, I, I totally acknowledge that a, a stand-up scooter might not be best for everyone, um, but we are looking at things like electric assist bikes, electric assist trikes, uh, tricycles even, um, that give you that extra boost that um, can keep you stable on, a, on three wheels. Um, and as far as shuttles go, we, it's definitely something that we are uh, constantly talking about um, and how we can bring kind of on-demand shuttle service to uh, the area. Um, I don't, I can't say anything right now, but it's definitely something that we um, are working on, talking to Metro, talking to LADOT about. Um, did I miss? Oh, rideshare. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about rideshare. Um, our, our 
usual comment is we want those shared rides. We want that lift line, that Uber pool where people are sharing rides. Um, during COVID, that uh, has kind of taken a temporary uh, halt, of course, because we want people to stay socially distant when they can. Okay, Sean McCarthy has his hand up. Go ahead, Sean, unmute yourself. You have one minute. Sean? Okay, we're gonna move on to Don Patterson. Go ahead, Don. Sean. Hi, this is Don Patterson. Thank you for uh, joining us, Nathan. Um, a couple of questions or thoughts, and if, if this is on your website, you could just refer me there. Um, one of the things I'd like to see um, considered in Warner Center is better uh, bicycle connections, especially from west of Warner Center. And I don't think it's necessary um, for it to be like on Victory Boulevard, for example. <laughs> to uh, Oxnard or something, you know, dedicated bicycle um, access to and through Warner Center from the West. Um, and also another thought is, you know, I was in a different city with um, a TMO. And one of the things that they tried during the holidays was if you biked, walked or took transit to the mall, then the mall would deliver free within a certain area. So just throwing that idea out there, if that's something that might be possible in the future. Thank you again. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for that question. Um, we definitely, please uh, feel free to shoot any um, kind of specific location comments to our, to our email address. Um, we're gonna try and expand the walk audit tool to also encourage um, to be able to place like pins for bike kind of uh, ideas or concerns or barriers. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. As far as the um, promotions go, I really like that. Um, we haven't we have a good partnership with Westfield, so maybe that's something we can talk to them about. I like that idea. Thanks so much. Okay, we have three hands raised from attendees. First is uh, Jordan Feinstock. Yeah, Jordan, yeah. I've done your app during a lunch thing when they had it at Warner Center, and my complaint, which this was over a year ago, was that all the sidewalks for people that take scooters or bikes have buckled up most likely due to trees, have not been fixed or even addressed in I don't know how long. Again, things like um, Burbank Boulevard, Owens Mouth, Canoga, you can go out down any sidewalk and see how the, the sidewalk has buckled up. So if you're in a mobility scooter or a, uh, a lime scooter, you have to literally go in the street because the sidewalks are unusable on just about every sidewalk. It's almost, it is actually dangerous. I did the app, I put the little pin things, I talked to people and none of them in I don't know how long has ever been addressed or actually been fixed in any sort of way where it makes it safe. The only safety you have is up by the bus line on the orange line going towards Sherman Way where they actually created a path. But everything else on the sidewalks are absolutely dangerous and I have to go on the, in the street. So I Thank wanna you. know what's gonna happen and why you're gonna fix that or is that gonna ever be addressed? Okay, that's one minute. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much for that. Um, yes, absolutely. Sidewalk and sidewalk conditions are, are something that we're on the top of mind um, and something that we're constantly um, advocating for. Um, thank you so much for using the app. I hope you continue to use it. The more information we can put on there, the easier it is for us to go to um, the to go to the city and say, hey, there are serious issues here. Um, we have the data, we have the information. Um, so please continue to use the Walk Audit app and we are um, using the data from there. Thank you. Uh, Chris Rowe, you have one minute. This is Chris Rowe. So I just want to make it clear that, you know, the, the members of the public that were on here were not able to see the presentation. So I was not aware of this particular program at all. Um, and since the last commenter spoke about walkability and things, what, what strikes my mind is, as a regular attendee of the concerts in the park, especially on the 4th of July, something that needs to be addressed is the fact that uh, the, the people, the, the masses uh, that, that walk to go to the concerts in the park literally flow out into the street. So you may want to consider some way widening the sidewalks uh, between say, for example, uh, the, the current Westfield, the village and, and, and the promenade and stuff. I realize that there's gonna be a new development at the promenade, but those, those sidewalks 
that are going to the park. And that's a minute. We should not be walking in the street. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you so much for that comment. And uh, Joyce, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe our presentation will be on the Neighborhood Council's website. Um, and I it can is, read out. It is cur it's currently on the website. It's posted as one of the 15 documents up there. Wonderful. Listed as um, the demo and presentation. And most of the stuff that's in our presentation is on our website. Once again, our website is warnerconnects.com. Um, and I can be reached at Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N, at warnerconnects.com um, if you have any follow-up questions. And thank you for the comment um, about the uh, sidewalk overflow during events. It's definitely something uh, to think about. Two more Peter. hands from attendees. Peter, this is yes, Don. Don. Real quick. Sean seems to be having trouble with his audio, so I don't know if either he could call in and also participate or if somebody can try to help him? Well, he has both computer audio and telephone audio. So as soon as he unmutes, okay. we, get, we get feedback. So he has to figure that out. We're in the middle of a meeting, this very long agenda. So I have a hand raised, phone number ending in 876. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Sean McCarthy. Okay, I was here. I vote. I vote yes on the first item. On this item, so I just want to make sure you know I voted yes on the first item. On this item, I'm curious: Does the city, does the state require a license for people who can drive electric bicycles that go over 40 miles an hour? Now, the reason I ask this is because they're zipping up and down all the all the the uh, the, the bicycle paths. I see gasoline powered bicycles on the bicycle paths. Is that legal? Is there a licensing requirement required for an electric bicycle? And if not, why not? These people are in traffic. They're driving on the sidewalks. They're bumping into people. They're falling off the bikes. Is there any licensing requirement? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there are three levels of electric bike um, require of levels that kind of are dictated by kind of how there's a throttle or how fast it can go. Um, the highest level, I, I believe you don't need a license for the highest level of electric bike. Um, and you, you certainly don't for the lower levels. Um, I'm not sure on the regulations for gasoline powered um, bicycles, but it's definitely something I can look into and get back to you on. If you want to shoot me an email, um, I'm happy to uh, look that up. Um, but I, I know sure. I can definitely pass along the information on the electric bike levels. Um, just, and I just, just so that I understand, just so that I understand this. So today, a 15 year old can get on a bicycle that can go 30 miles an hour on a bicycle path or in a city street. That's OK. But 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when I was riding around on a moped, on a on a mini bike, I could be arrested. You've been on for a minute. Thank you. Thank you. And I will just mention that electric bikes are um, speed capped. So they have a maximum speed that after they get to a certain mile per hour, the, the motor cuts out. Okay. Great. One one last, run somebody over. One last comment from today, Kennedy. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, there's just a quick comment about um, sort of like the uh, conditions of the sidewalk made earlier. Um, and I just wanted to uh, quickly comment on the fact that it's actually um, uh, it's illegal to ride on sidewalks with an electric scooter. So somebody was saying about how um, conditions of the sidewalk force them into the street, but riding on the sidewalks um, are actually illegal to begin with. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that, Nathan, but I'm pretty sure that's the law as it stands in California. So um, I think conditions of the sidewalk are sort of uh, irrelevant in this case. I think that comment was about motorized wheelchairs. Oh, okay, I, I could have been wrong. I thought it was about scooters. I believe he uh, used the term mobility scooter, which is uh, common for those kind of devices. Yeah, and those are definitely allowed on the sidewalk um, for the, the kind of the more four wheel okay. wheelchair type scooter. Yep. Okay. Um, it was just pointed out to me that um, our website is actually .org, not .com. So my apologies, um, it's warnerconnects.org and my email is at .org as well. So um, please update that and we'll get to the updated slide um, to you as well. Okay, we have uh, all people that wanna make comment have made comment. Okay, Nathan, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm very excited about the future of transportation and Warner Center. One of the things that I have asked uh, the TMO for is to try to um, perhaps have more space 
a storage space in Warner Center for uh, bicycles and electric bicycles and scooters and that sort of thing. And so I hope that the TMO will continue to work with uh, developers uh, and Warner Center to provide that sort of space. And I appreciate you coming. Thank you, Nate. And Thank you all so much. It's uh, been a pleasure. Please uh, feel free to reach out, follow us on social media, send me an email. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Julia. Okay. We will now move on to item number one. Um, once again, I would like to remind everyone that uh, uh, we will uh, have one minute public comment on uh, this agenda item. We will also have one minute board comment on this agenda item. And so I will now read the motion. Item number one, Joyce Fletcher, President, Community Impact Statement Request, request from the Office of Council Member Bob Bloomingfield. Motion for the board of the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council to support the Bloomingfield, Blooming, Bloomingfield, Buscano Rodriguez, Krikorian motion, CF 21376 to amend LAMC 4118 and 5611. The satanic make, motion to make them consistent with various court rulings to allow city council to designate specific locations near freeways, housing, storage, and other facilities that serve homeless persons while sitting, sleeping, lying, and the storage of personal property that may be prohibited. Um, do I have a second for this motion? I'll second it, Marty Lipkin. Thank you, Marty. Uh, before we move to public comment and board comment, I believe that council member Blumenfield is with us tonight. Council member, are you here? Yes, I am. I'm prepared to give you a little presentation about it. Thank you very much and um, good evening. Good evening. Well, Joyce, thank you and thank you um, all, to all the council members and everybody who's gathered here today. Uh, I'll just jump right into it. Uh, earlier this year, the city of LA was sued for the way that it treats homeless people and the way that it maintains the public right of way in a case known as LA Alliance versus Los Angeles. Overseeing that uh, federal lawsuit is a, is a federal judge named David Carter. And a few years ago, this, car, this judge famously presided over similar litigation against Orange County uh, cities regarding the way that they were treating homeless people. In that case and several similar ones, they came to a compromise settlement where each city in the county would provide shelter for at least 60% of its homeless population. And then they could go back to enforcing no sleeping on the sidewalks in that city. This judge is trying to forge the same type of settlement in the city of LA, but he's looking at doing it on a district by district basis. Because in LA, our council districts are literally bigger in population than every single one of those 28 cities where he's forged such a settlement. This would mean that each district in the city would be responsible for sheltering at least 60% of the homeless population in their district. In my case, in our case in the third district, we have 606 unsheltered people according to the last homeless count in January, 2020. That means at least 365 beds. My goal is to find 100% beds for all of the folks who are homeless. Now, my district has the fewest number of homeless people compared to any other district in the city. That and means no housing this available. goal is very doable. And so I jumped at the opportunity to expand shelter in my district while also addressing public health concerns on our streets. So I've spent the last several months uh, since this lawsuit started trying to find additional places that would be willing and able to host homeless interim housing. Uh, and also importantly, this lawsuit has leveraged 
incredible new resources from the county. They've agreed to pay $300 million to the city, money they should have been paying a long time ago, 60 million a year for five years to help create 6,100 new shelter beds. This funding breakthrough combined with state money and COVID federal funds has created an amazing opportunity. It's an opportunity I have been highly focused on seizing. The good news is that my team and I were able to secure eight new sites, eight new shelter sites, all of which will be opening between now and May for a total of more than 400 new shelter beds, which is 10 times as many shelter beds currently exist, not just in my district, but at the entire West Valley, west of the 405. This is huge and I'm very proud of that success. The first site to open will be the Bridge Home in Canoga Park with 80 beds off Satikoy, hopefully opening in January, followed by 36 additional beds being added to our local domestic violence shelter, something I was able to fund directly through my office account. This is in addition to funding I received recently secured to be able to allocate additional units to Tarzana Treatment's drug rehab program that's in connection with Providence Cedars Hospital, a partnership that I helped forge about two years ago. Uh, and we're also installing safe parking uh, in a lot in Canoga Park for those homeless individuals living in their car and have several other potential sites for uh, safe parking, all of which will complement the safe parking already behind my district office. In addition, we're transforming two hotels that were leased as an emergency effort during COVID-19 to house homeless people, what was known as Project Room Key Hotels, into transitional and permanent supportive housing now known as Project Home Key Hotels. One is the Super 8 in Canoga Park, the other is the Howard Johnson's in Reseda. You may have heard of other hotels uh, in this program that are in the, in the Room Key program closing down. I fought hard to make sure that these hotels in my district stayed in the system. They now will be transformed and they represent another 125 rooms, which is potentially 250 beds. Finally, we're installing two cabin communities in my district one in Reseda right behind my district office and one on Topham in Tarzana, just west of Reseda by the Orange Line. Each of these cabin communities will consist of tiny homes installed on a parking lot and they will include a, prim a privacy perimeter fencing, 24 seven security, bathrooms, laundry, shower on site, food provided, case management services. So everyone on site will be with a social worker to transition to a more permanent home. Together, these contain 125 cabins. Each cabin holds one person or a couple during COVID, but theoretically could hold, they each could hold two beds or 250 people when COVID restrictions have been lifted. All of the above projects I just mentioned are already greenlit and funded. With that said, the search isn't over. And I've uh, said it before and I'll say it again. I wanna see all five communities in my district host at least one site that helps address our homeless crisis. I wanna see a future in my district where when one person becomes homeless, they go to a shelter, not the street. Other shelter opportunities, such as congregate housing, social housing, rapid rehousing, which means getting people directly into apartments, master leasing, et cetera, are all great opportunities and are on the table as well. I also wanna say we uh, have Triple H funding coming our way for two permanent supportive housing developments, which will provide a total of 100 permanent supportive units in the near future. That's in addition to the Winnetka Village that we've had for a couple of years. And that will allow people living temporarily in our cabin communities to transition to more permanent homes within the district. So that's the good news. And I wanna talk about that portion. Uh, I also wanna talk about the portion of the deal that has sparked some controversy. And what I mean is how do we keep areas clear once people have been offered a dry warm bed indoors? Having hundreds of beds in the district will allow us to keep sidewalks and public space clear, but most particularly within 500 feet of a freeway and in proximity 500 feet to a local shelter. As you may have noticed recently, if you drive through uh, the Winnetka or Corbin underpass or any of the underpasses in my district, there are far, far fewer people living in the underpasses today than there were several weeks ago. This is the result of a six week pilot program that culminated in an intensive two week effort with Judge Carter, LASA, LA Family Housing, the Volunteers of America, my staff and myself. LASA agreed to do this pilot program after I begged them for help with our underpasses. And they were under pressure to show that their various interventions could work on, the, on a location specific basis, 
which is something they really hadn't done before. It's new to them. They accepted the challenge and we found the needed shelter space. Bottom line, every person who had been living in the underpasses was offered a better alternative, whether through rapid rehousing, a bridge home, detox bed, motel room. They were told that they would not be allowed under the freeways after March 20, 27th. And in a two week period, we helped 57 people into a better situation. We enrolled them with LA Family Housing Case Management to make plans for a better life than living under the 101 freeway. No LAPD officers were involved. No one was arrested. No one had their belongings taken or seized. We proved the naysayers who said that these folks and a lot of these folks were, were addicted to drugs, that they would never accept services. Well, we proved them wrong. We also proved the value of a choice state. As many of these folks who have been offered shelter in the past, and I know because I was out there offering them shelter for a year, for two years, uh, many of them needed that extra incentive to overcome the inertia. The underpasses are not completely clear right now. And you may notice, even though we got everyone housed, a few people and some piles of belonging remain. That is because the city's laws are out of date and they need to be updated to keep the freeway and other areas clear once people have been offered a appropriate alternative. Right now, there are three people in these underpasses as of today. Two of them have accepted hotel rooms and are currently enrolled in Project Room Key, um, but they still choose to spend some evenings in the underpass. One person is new to the area. This is why six colleagues and I, the maximum number that you can have uh, before you have eight, which is uh, automatic, introduced a motion to update the city's laws, to rewrite laws that were deemed unconstitutional in a very, um, and to rewrite them in a constitutional way, a very narrow but constitutional way. There are some of you, who, uh, many people here who've mounted a call-in campaign today who strongly disagree with this decision. And I respect that. But there are a couple of important reasons I'm supporting the plan for buffer zones under the freeway and in close proximity to shelter sites. First, it's a practical decision. Several of the sites that we're looking at for shelter have indicated explicitly that they will only be willing to host a shelter site if there was a guarantee that their property would not become a magnet for other encampments or storage of belongings on the sidewalk immediately adjacent to it. This means that in order to get the beds we need, we also need the promise of the ability to keep the areas clean and clear. Second is for the dignity of the people who are living in these new shelters. For these formerly homeless people to feel like neighbors in a community and for them to feel like they're actually progressing, their environment needs to look and feel different than living on the street. If the new shelter walls are surrounded by tents, it will be harder for folks to rehabilitate. Third is for public confidence, that giving people a bed not only gives someone a safe place to sleep, but it also makes the community sidewalks and freeway areas cleaner and passable. I firmly believe we need, will need to show to the entire district that we have a shelter in your, that having a shelter in your community increases the cleanliness of your local sidewalks while also helping the people who previously lived on those sidewalks. This is the only way we'll be able to move forward with additional projects in the years to come and convince additional communities to accept additional shelters. A 500 foot buffer is not a lot to ask, but it will make a big difference for that shelter and for that neighborhood. Again, in my district, we got over 60 people off the street humanely with no police interaction or arrests. And when a federal judge, and when a federal judge has declared that these areas, the freeway uh, underpasses are unsafe and unhealthy to live, we should be able to keep them clear for pedestrians to use those sidewalks. That judge is still monitoring what we're doing and we need to be able to, to uh, meet his expectations, especially here in the West Valley when those underpasses are critical corridors that connect thousands of pedestrians to schools, grocery stores, and essential services. And when the only other alternatives are too far away to be used. I know a lot of you, a lot of you here used to send me videos of people walking in the street because they couldn't get past the Winnetka uh, underpass or kids going to Taft High School. Amending the city codes 5611 and 4118 will allow the city to enforce anti-camping laws in very specific locations once housing has been offered to the people there. Specifically, this proposal would do several things. 
allow buffer zones to prohibit camping or storage of belongings within 500 feet of new homeless service centers like bridge housing, cabin communities, and freeway underpasses. It would necessitate a separate city council approval by resolution for each buffer zone. So it doesn't automatically happen. You need a separate resolution um, before that area is made off limits to camping. And the council would only pass a freeway underpass resolution once they were convinced that every person living in that underpass had been offered appropriate shelter. And the council would have to explicitly make findings that doing so was to promote public health, safety, or welfare. Furthermore, the council will have the opportunity to draw up protocols. And this was explicitly stated in the city attorney's accompanying report to this motion, that we need to draw up protocols to make sure that the areas are kept clear and passable in ways that do not criminalize people, but give them every opportunity to, to do so voluntarily. In the initial draft ordinance, there was some confusing and overly broad language drafted that I'm working to remedy. People believe the law could effectively ban camping anywhere in the city, which is not the intent and certainly not my intent. This would have been wrong on several levels, but most importantly, because we don't have enough available housing alternatives and therefore wouldn't be compliant with relevant court decisions. But also throughout our uh, Judge Carter proceedings on the LA Alliance case, he has made it crystal clear that we need this ordinance. We need an ordinance like this one on the books so that the more than 6,000 beds that come online because of this case, that the city can ban camping under the freeways. He has said every other city he has dealt with has such an ordinance. And he has said that 99% of the time, enforcement is not even an issue. As more housing and shelter is built, the council can vote for what streets can have this sort of buffer or anti-camping protection, but that's in the future for when we get the housing. I've worked with neighborhood councils, local stakeholder groups, neighborhoods to earn support for many of the housing, uh, homeless alternative housing projects that are underway. And one thing has been clear, almost every group has said that in order to get their support, there needs to be a plan so that homeless services don't mean more encampments around that site many of which are adjacent to residential communities or right across the street from residential communities. I've told you and every organization that I would work to do just that. So where, where could this apply in the West Valley if the council passes this ordinance? For example, right now, our bridge housing site that's opening up in Canoga Park is under construction. We have two cabin communities funded soon to be under construction. One at the Metro lot in Topham, the other with my office parking lot. All of these sites, once they would open, we could introduce, we could, if this, motion passes that's before you, when we're opening up these other sites, we would then be able to introduce a resolution to say that we want to have a 500 foot buffer around these new areas. Ultimately, I believe if someone has been offered appropriate alternative shelter, bridge hotels, et cetera, they do not have to accept it. But if they choose not to accept it, um, there are limits to where they can camp and where they can put their belongings. Uh, and they can't be in certain areas like in front of someone's home or near services, near bridge home or cabin communities and the like. We have a right, I would say an obligation to keep some areas off limits to setting up encampments. Also, if someone has been given shelter bed or a hotel room and is fed and provided for by the city, county and at the taxpayer's expense, it's reasonable to ask that they accept some societal norms and not maintain a second tent dwelling or, or put their personal belongings on the public right of way next to that shelter. Sometimes people have a, a room in a bridge home or motel and they come back to their tent uh, a few nights a week because they want that lifestyle. You and our community deserve to be able to set limits on where that tent and belongings can be stored when we are providing appropriate shelters. To do that, we need to update our city's laws. The proposed update is extremely limited in scope. I'm sure there are many people here who wish that it were much broader in scope. So again, this ordinance doesn't criminalize homelessness throughout the city as it has been or will be characterized by some. All this ordinance does is create a framework so that as we get more home, bridge housing and cabin communities and open more room key sites like the two in my district, we'll have reasonable tools. So if needed, we can ensure that encampments don't grow outside of the new service sites and in areas that are unsafe under the freeways. Because we don't want this effort to be the end of our homeless plan, we wanna think long-term, especially considering the grim realities that we're facing economically because of COVID. 
I believe that a constitutional humane update to our ordinance is the only way to get to that reality. As counterintuitive to some people as that may sound. So as a basic sketch of my plan to address homelessness, this is a basic sketch and how to get this, this very narrow motion is part of that overall approach. It is not the approach, it is just a mere part of it. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, answering your questions, and I know everyone on this call is interested in being part of the solution for homelessness. This is the problem that is, that is, is, is plaguing our, um, our city, our community. It is, it is one of the most important issues that we can deal with, and it's, it is dealing with people's lives. So I thank you all for your tireless advocacy, and I appreciate the work that all of you do and the volunteer work all of you as neighborhood council members put in. Uh, thank you for the time. And that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. We will now take a uh, public comment, uh, one minute each. Um, and also um, we wanna try to get as much pub public comment as possible. So I'm uh, am, uh, kindly asking uh, the councilman to make his uh, responses as brief as possible so that we can get as many, as much public comment in as possible. Uh, we will need to end public comment uh, in, at 8.30, so we will have 30 minutes of public comment or questions. We have 13 items on our agenda, and so uh, at 8.30, we will then need to move forward uh, to our uh, other agenda items. We and will Joyce, now take- Joyce. Yes. Yes. Bob, sp Bob spoke for 17 minutes and 45 seconds, and we have 16 attendees with hands raised and four uh, neighborhood council members. So if they each get a minute, it's pretty even. So you want, okay. you, you want to- Well, un unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I would like to, you know, give everyone uh, who may be um, here tonight uh, the opportunity to make public comment. I was not aware that, um, many people would show up uh, tonight if necessary. Uh, I'm sure that, or I'm positive that, that the council member will be glad to take uh, phone calls or emails from mm -hmm. any uh, members of the public who uh, doesn't have the opportunity to speak tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that could be helpful would be if, um, for instance, if you are one of the individuals who emailed the board your comments today, perhaps you might let someone else speak. Um, or if you hear other members of the public uh, speak on the topic that you're speaking on, then perhaps we could you know, move on to someone who may have a different topic. Yeah. But we will have to end public comment at 8.30. Okay, well, we have 23 what? members of the public who wanna speak. Okay, and so we will st we will start right now, and then after the members of the public uh, makes public comment, uh, then we will move on to the board members. Okay, Albert. Albert. Hi. Uh, before my public comment, I want to call a point of order. Uh, Council Member Bob Blumenfield's presentation was not listed on item number one's agenda item. Uh, I would suggest the council uh, amend the time for public comments to extend from eight thirty to at least 20 minutes to account for the, this presentation that was not listed on the agenda item, nor where was this PDF listed on the, the, the agenda. Um, may I proceed with my um, public comment now? Uh, yes, but I, I will uh, remind everyone that we will close this agenda item at 8.30. Uh, this motion was posted on the website and has on been the there. And uh, Council Member uh, Bloomingfield uh, just informed me this afternoon that he uh, would be attending and I welcomed um, his participation. That was a presentation, that wasn't a, okay. okay Albert, Public ahead. comment, thank you. Uh, my name's Albert, I uh, went to school at Portola. I have a lot of friends and family uh, in Woodland Hills. Uh, I'm a member of the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. Community impact statements originate from the community uh, procedurally, this is just being handled very incorrectly. Community impact statements should originate from a committee or uh, the stakeholders of Woodland Hills, not necessarily the office of Council Member Bob Blumenfield. Um, there are two committees, the Homelessness Committee and the Public Safety and Transportation Committee, 
the homelessness committee actually was canceled for tonight at 6.30, which would have been an opportune uh, moment to uh, put a vote to suggest a community impact statement to the governing board. Uh, the fact that this is being requested from the office and allowed by the, the governing board to be listed on this agenda item is rushing and not including all stakeholders' opinions. Uh, this is just not how you do things. This is incorrect and it should uh, not even be on the agenda, but if you're gonna vote for it, you, you can't support this. It's just incorrect. Thank you. Uh, Zach? You have one minute. Uh, yeah, um, thank you very much. I'd like to say um, that was just really um, unbelievable that Councilman Blumenfeld gets to decide that uh, his motion that he wrote, which by the way, he plowed through the city council in under a week when it takes everything else eons to move through, that he got this through without any committee and he got an entire 20 minute segment to himself. And there was no contrary opinion from any kind of homelessness advocate groups. I'm sure you'll hear a lot of them tonight, but this was just really terrible, terrible procedure. And in addition to that, Councilman Blumenfeld has zero housing in his district. He has, according to his own office, when I called, 700 unhoused and residents seconds. and zero rooms. So all this flowery talk about how many rooms he's going to provide, he has zero. And in the meantime, he wants to criminalize and that's one being minute. homeless. Thank you. Pilar? Pilar? One minute. Hi, Pilar Schiavo from West Valley People's Alliance and West Valley Homes Yes again. Um, we are stakeholders here in the district. We actually do outreach weekly, um, including the Warner Center area and throughout CD3 and the whole West Valley. Um, and I think a couple issues that need to be addressed is that people refuse housing for a completely valid reason. It is because they don't feel safe. In congregate housing right now under COVID, it is not safe. And multiple shelters have been in quarantine. Um, many people have had experiences of being sexually assaulted, abused, beat up, and robbed in shelters. So those are not viable options. On the contrast, when we outreach to people about Project Room Key Homes, nearly everyone we spoke to Ten wanted seconds. to get on the list. And so we need to be offering things that are actually appropriate and safe for people and not wasting time on, and money in the middle of a budget deficit that's on criminalization. One Thank you for and your comment. Uh, phone number ending in 659. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, my name's Nicole Plesha. I'm a resident and homeowner in Woodland Hills, as well as a member of uh, West Valley Mutual Aid and Street Watch LA. Um, the reason I felt the need to call in to this meeting during bedtime, because I'm a working parent, is because uh, agenda item one is so egregious. It's unconscionable to propose this during uh, COVID, during recession and a housing crisis. And with COVID and the resulting recession, homelessness is only going to get worse. As Pilar just said, the issues of sexual assault, abuse, uh, in shelters is too rampant. And if you are seeing people not opting into a shelter system, that is why it is not a viable alternative. Uh, I agree we need a project seconds. home key. We do not need, we do not need more uh, shelters, especially during COVID. And we just all got the alert saying COVID numbers are going up. We should be ashamed and minute. focused Thank on- Thank you for the comment. I'll give everybody a 10 second warning. Caleb, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> Hello, yeah. Hello, yes. My name is Caleb Crowder. I'm with everyone and I'm also with the West Valley People's Alliance. Um, I'm just calling in to speak to say that all people should have an equal right to access public spaces and no one should be arbitrarily banned from large sections of the city. There is a plethora of current available research on this. It shows that these punitive approaches are expensive, they're ineffective, they're counterproductive. 
Um, this body and the council members should definitely know that. They move people around without creating or taking advantage of permanent solutions. As was mentioned, council member, you know, we appreciate all the efforts for talking about temporary solutions, but you're not focusing on permanent solutions. That's why we have people who are continually homeless or experiencing homelessness. Moreover, it erodes trust in communities when you're focusing on things like this and not focusing on permanent solutions. I would urge this council to oppose this motion. Ten seconds. Criminal, criminalizing poverty is not the answer. It's never been the answer. It's tied to racist policies. So please vote no on this and focus on long-term solutions. Thank you for your comment, Kay. Uh, today, Kennedy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of this, um, talk about this sort of stuff. Um, I believe that, um, if these solutions are to work, um, uh, then there shouldn't be such a worry and concern about, um, criminalizing, um, the homeless. So it, to me, it doesn't make much sense to, um, pass this to, uh, ban certain spots for people to sleep in. Um, if these proposition, these proposals are, are going to work. So um, to me, I think the priorities are all wrong in this. Um, and it makes sense to uh, try to focus on the um, core issues like affordable housing. Um, Woodland Hills and the Warner Center don't have an access point for homeless people, um, the unhoused. And um, to uh, jump to this sort of uh, conclusion seems like the priorities are all uh, wrong. And have a viable... Um, and real solutions before we start to criminalize. Thank you for your comment. Chris Rowe, unmute, you have one minute. Hi, this is Chris Rowe. I would like to say that I understand that the city is trying to take this action based on what Judge Carter is telling them. He's, he's telling them that they, it is not safe for these people. And if you look at the air quality by the freeways and the safety, uh, because cars have accidents and stuff like that, it is not safe. And we need compassion. I, every year, spend hundreds of dollars of my own money to buy sleeping bags and other things for the homeless and, and have been giving things out through the legal venues, through our, our local shelters in our area to support the homeless. So I want to make it clear. And, and the fact that we used uh, on SHOOP the Community Center for the Homeless, we need to do that again this winter. It's getting cold. It's, the rains can start. So I support everything that Council Member Blumenfield has been doing to Thank you, supply Chris. shelter for our homeless. Jamie Penn, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello again, um, Jamie Penn, resident three representative for the sub, um, subdistrict three for Wilshire Center Korea Town Neighborhood Council. Um, I will be presenting uh, a community impact statement that opposes this to the council um, on November 24th. Uh, that did properly go through our homeless um, committee and was been voted on by our general board. Um, I do want to point out the fact that on average, three of our unhoused neighbors do pass away a day. I believe that's actually up to four since the last heat wave. Um, the current solutions are not working. Um, this is a way to criminalize their survival events, and it's just wrong. Um, if you do vote on this, um, in my opinion, improperly placed item on your agenda, you should absolutely oppose it as the, Ten seconds. Uh, the constituents are, are voicing as well as the advocates that are dealing with this very, very, very huge crisis. Thank you for um, that. Carmen Elena De La Luz, go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you, uh, Joyce Flesher, you should have cut off the councilman like you did me earlier because he did not speak till the motion till the last two minutes of his 17 minutes. Please board, do not believe anything that Bob smokes and mirrors said to you, uh, the motion has nothing to do with housing and housing is what is needed. It is absolute BS to say that Judge Carter said that this is required. Just this past Thursday at the Judge Carter hearing, the motion was brought up and when said there had to be consequences, Carter replied, get me the housing. 
He said, the problem is the discussion is backward. This court's never going to allow anything unless the housing is there. We need to focus on housing. And when it was mapped out, this motion would take away 50% of the area where encampments could be. And all it will do is push encampments into more residential areas, which is the last thing that housed residents in your uh, neighborhood council want. Please. Thank you for your comment. Nigel. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'll just be brief. Uh, yeah, this motion is ridiculous. It's as ineffective as it is cruel. Um, you know, it, all it does is criminalize the unhoused. I know Bob likes to say it doesn't, but that's literally the only thing in the motion. Um, as we know, housing is the only real solution to the homelessness crisis. Um, and we also know that this doesn't have any housing in it and our city doesn't have enough housing. We have 60,000 plus unhoused residents that we know of. Um, and this motion would do nothing to house any of them. Uh, Bob's half-assed attempts to open a few hundred beds in his district isn't going to change this. Um, so I really think he needs to focus more on actually doing housing. Instead, unfortunately, he's trying to launder support for this cruel motion um, in this board through an impromptu process. And uh, frankly, I think that's ridiculous. Ten seconds. I also want to just point out before I go, definitely vote no on this motion, but to, for Bob to say that this is a lifestyle choice is fucking disgusting. Okay, thank you for that. And please don't use profane language. Next is a phone number ending in 106. You have one minute. You have to unmute. Area 607, go ahead. Hi, hello. My name is Olivia Powell and I'm a stakeholder as a member of the West Valley People's Alliance. I respectfully ask that the board vote no on this item. I would hope that every person here is concerned about COVID-19. I really hope that's the case. As a neighborhood council, I would like to think that you're here to help take care of your neighbors, which includes their health. It includes protecting each other during a pandemic. And to support this motion is to go against CDC guidelines during a pandemic. Furthermore, I want to address that another speaker brought up that we are going into winter and it will be raining. And it is additionally cruel to push people out of the shelter of even an overpass when we know it's going to be raining. How disturbing is that? This motion does nothing to alleviate homelessness, which only happens when we provide housing. It is a fact there are not enough beds for every unhoused person in Los Angeles. This motion does nothing to solve that. It only creates more harm and criminalizes homelessness. Please vote no. Thank you. Danielle Kolker. You have to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, um, I grew up in Woodland Hills my whole life. Um, I'm very disheartened to see the town I grew up in kind of spearheading the movement for this horrible motion. I'm really, really, really hoping you will all vote no. Um, the council member's presentation was full of contradictions and lies. Uh, he claimed to, he, that he got everyone housed after saying that he clearly did not get everyone housed. He mentioned that the law was deemed unconstitutional and he's attempting to make it constitutional. He did not say he's changing the law. It's very difficult to be deemed unconstitutional. That shows how inhumane this law is along with everything else that everyone else before me has said. Um, he said that the sites won't shelter people if their community lives around them, if there are other tents in the street. What kind of site would not house people if their friends and family are living outside without them because there still isn't room for them? No wonder people are declining these shelters. They are not welcoming for people. These are lies that he made up. He made up other lies about it preventing them from rehabilitating, assuming that they need to rehabilitate from something. What do unhoused people need to rehabilitate? That's one minute. Thank you for your comment. Xander Felix. You have to unmute yourself. You have one minute. Go ahead. You're unmuted. Okay, we'll move on to the next speaker. Chris Vornan. Hi, can, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. So, uh, Bob, fully support your motion. Uh, and folks, please vote yes on this. 
I'm a Woodland Hills resident. You know, I've seen my community, community deteriorate due to homelessness. Just there's a lot of, you know, they bring crime, they bring dry, drugs, prostitution, all kinds of problems. My kids cannot go outside and play because there's homeless people and they're dangerous as hell. My wife cannot go outside because she can probably be raped and killed by somebody out there. This is not- This safe. is disgusting. What are you saying? Oh my God. Mm, nobody watch your mouth with me, dear. Excuse me, but uh, it's, let's not interrupt each other. Everyone has a right to their own public comment. Yes, uh, please give me more time because, uh, but anyhow, like I said, it's dangerous for our kids for a lot of people out here. I mean, you can literally see people do drugs in the broad daylight. If you want to see breast diffusion, just go on Van Nuys, bust up. Buy it right then and there. It's literally bad. On top of that, there's an accent there. Human condition. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Xander Felix, you want to try again? Go ahead, you have one minute. Star six to unmute. He's unmuted. Okay. Am I muted? Xander, are you there? Okay, we're gonna move on. It's two opportunities. Phone number ending in 585. Go ahead, unmute yourself. 585, you're unmuted, go yes, ahead. Yes, I'm here. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, what's your name, please? My name is Michael. My eight, my octogenarian in-laws live right near Warner Center. I'm there every Sunday. And it is true that homelessness is a terrible blight on our beautiful society. But this council member's motion is steeped in a lack of compassion, unkindness, and cruelty. He can say it's not criminalizing, but at the end of this process, there is the enforcement. And that enforcement, again, is going to involve Los Angeles police officers. officers. Now, whether or not you think whether or not you think we should defund the police, we can all agree we do not need police officers interacting with homeless And that's people. one that, minute. That thing happened. Thank you for your comment. Michael? Oh, you're spoke. Oh, sorry. Um, Uh, Dory C. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You, go ahead. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Dory. Um, I'm born and raised in the West Valley. Um, like to urge you to vote no on this. Um, as others have said before me, this motion says nothing about housing. Um, Blumenfield mentioned housing on the table but the fact of the matter is people are on the streets and we want to criminalize that further um in a pandemic i just can't see the sense in something like this but outside of the pandemic as well outside of the weather uh it was 30 degrees here in woodland hills yesterday morning so i would like to just echo everything that everyone said before me and uh or do the vote no on this thank you Sophie Bridges. Hi. Yes, go ahead. 
Hi, I find this presentation to the council utterly offensive and inhumane. In addition to other comments, valid concerns about the cruelty and inefficacy of this motion, council member Blumenfeld himself admitted his district has a relatively low unhoused population. So while you may only have 660 or 700 unhoused constituents in your district, other, other districts across Los Angeles have far more. So even if we could trust you to make housing temporary and permanent for everyone in your area, that'll be a harder goal for other communities to reach. Yet you're proposing enforcement across the city, which only puts thousands of unhoused individuals at extreme risk. Please vote no on this motion. It's simply a human rights abuse. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next, we have Dana Isaacs. Hi, um, I am a resident of Woodland Hills, and I would just like to voice my support, support for uh, Councilman Blumenfeld's uh, motion. I hope the board votes yes. Um, I think it's a little ironic that every, all the advocates speaking here are talking about um, criminalizing homelessness when, in fact, allowing them to live in the underpasses, shooting up and without masks, because at Winnetka, they were without masks. They couldn't care less about COVID. So um, to allow them to stay there, shooting up, uh, doing drugs in the open, which we all saw, not wearing masks, living on top of each other, inhaling those fumes, that's criminalizing homelessness. Offering them housing as an alternative and keeping those walkways safe and clear for the public so that they're not threatening and yelling at us and throwing things at us and threatening kids when school starts again at Taft High School like they did before the pandemic began with a guy with a stick who, who was uh, threatening kids who were waiting for the bus and relying on public transportation. We need those areas clear, the walkways okay, clear. That's one minute. Oh, okay. Anna, thank you for your comment. You're spreading dangerous lies. Phone number ending in 181. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, can you identify yourself? Hi, my name is John Simon. I'm a lifelong resident of the Valley and a stakeholder. I oppose this motion. I ask you vote no. I think it's misleading and despicable. Uh, the last speaker was talking about COVID. I mean, this motion ignores CDC guidelines. <laughs> so that right there is an indicator. Um, they've been talking about the improper, uh, you know, follow through on this is being rammed through to avoid committee and suppressing public comment. It's corrupt and it's not how neighborhood council should function. Uh, aside from it being cruel, it's predicated on a lie. Um, Blumenfeld can continue to present the lie that he's created shelter for the own house, but that won't make it true. There's no housing to be seen. And it, it's failed policies like this that have increased the homeless pop population in this area. And uh, the only way to alleviate that is for the city of LA to, you know, build new homes and affordable low income housing. So as a stakeholder, I Yeah, that's ask one minute. You. Thank you. Okay. So the next three up are gonna be Ed K, phone number ending in nine three eight, and Laura Velke. So Ed K, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, I, my name is Ed, and I live in Woodland Hills, and I've heard a lot of the word housing brought up tonight, but uh, nobody has talked about the real problem. Anybody who's walked around Woodland Hills Warner Center knows that most of these people that don't have a house are actually either mentally ill and or drug addicted, and there needs to be some, some something to address that problem. Putting people in houses who are mentally ill and drug addicted isn't going to work. Now, saying that, I support this message, message uh, this motion as a first step so that we can start cleaning up the streets. These people are dangerous, they need help. Yes, they resist going in the shelters because they can't get their, their fix. Their dealer isn't allowed into the shelters. They can't get their heroin and meth in the shelters. That's why they have to still have their little side huts on the street. This town needs to be cleaned up, it's disgusting. I've lived here for 30 Ten years seconds. and I haven't seen this as, anywhere as bad as this. Please clean up the streets. Where are they going to go, Ed? Thank you. Maybe Ed, you're you right. Move, Ed. 
Please do not have cross talk and allow everyone and respect everyone's right to public comment. Next phone number ending in 938. You have to unmute yourself, 938. Yes. Good evening, board members. Just a point of parliamentary oh, procedure. Your, I wanted to call attention. What's your name? This is Aaron. Aaron. Thank you. I wanted to call attention that there are current Woodland Hills Warren Center neighborhood council board members who are also members of the West Valley, West Valley People's Alliance. The West Valley People's Alliance has already made their opposition to the council members motion well known and public, as you've heard tonight. Therefore, these neighborhood council board members who are also members of the West Valley People's Alliance need to recuse themselves from tonight's vote as per their ethics training that's required to be a neighborhood council board member. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Laura Velke. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, hi there, Laura Velke from Dunwatch. Um, I just wanna remind the board and the audience that uh, the president does not have the authority to limit other than one minute speaking time or cut off public comment on a matter before you simply because there are other items on the agenda. You are required to sit through every single public comment before taking a vote, otherwise the vote's illegal. Um, and it would also be presumed that you've already taken a position on the matter without it coming before the board. Uh, finally, if it does, the board does take a vote on this and it is an, on an affirmative, I would have everybody file an ethics complaint against this neighborhood council, against the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and Bob, Bob Blumenfeld's office. 10 seconds. Thank you for your time. The next three are a phone number ending in 580, play in Woodland Hills, and a phone number ending in 033. So 580, go ahead. Hi there, my name is Chase Nelson. I'm a member of West Valley People's Alliance. I went to school in Woodland Hills and I'm from West Hills right next door. Um, I wanna concur with everything that people have said before me, except for the disgusting comments by, made by some individuals. And I would urge those individuals to actually do work in the community with some of the organizations on this call tonight, because they'll maybe they'll learn some humanity. Um, this motion is particularly, it's not effective, particularly when there truly are not enough beds to offer the unhoused. 250 or whatever Bob Blumenfeld has promised to come at some point in the future is not enough. Plus the housing options already are not safe for people. That is why people are refusing them. Knowing that, as many people have pointed out, um, we are going into winter, it's gonna be really cold, but also as someone pointed out, Woodland Hills is the hottest area in LA. Where are people, the freeway overpasses are some of the only shaded options for some of these people to, to be in. Um, in the last heat wave, people died, all right? So I urge you guys to show some humanity and vote no on this motion. Thank you. Okay, it is nope. now 8.30 and um, we appreciate everyone's public comment. If you would like to make further uh, comment uh, to, directly to Council Member uh, Bloomingfield, uh, please um, call his office or email him. And um, I'm sure that- Point of order. Point of order, please. I appeal yes. the chair's decision so that we extend the discussion to hear everyone's comment. To the parliamentarian point of order, I appeal the chair's decision. We need to extend the discussion and hear everyone's comment. This is John Sandy Campbell from Area 3, point of order. This is Don Patterson. Um, so standing rule two allows the presiding officer to impose a stated time limit on any speaker. And I concur with John Sandy Campbell that we should finish the public comments as we do not have a rule 
regarding limited public comment as a whole. Uh, Vanessa Serrano with Empower LA, are you here? She's here. Uh, Vanessa, can you comment as to whether or not we can end public comment at this point or not? Um, it is okay for the chair to establish a set amount of time for an agenda item, uh, which includes discussion by the board and also public comment. Um, our recommendation is that when that that be made at the time that the item is open for discussion, which was, um, I think it was earlier today. So if that was made, then you're able to move forward um, with ending public comment and moving forward, whether the board is gonna take action on this or table it for a future meeting. Thank you, uh, Vanessa. We will now move forward with board member comment. And um, board member comment will be limited to uh, one minute. And then after the board members have made public comment, then we will vote on the item. Okay. Andrew McNeil. Hi, I have, um, I have uh, first of all, I have a question for the parliamentarian, if that's okay to ask at this moment, or would I be required to do a point of order? Uh, you can go ahead and ask Don a question. Awesome. Um, so I was, um, I was included on an old West Valley People's Alliance um, member list. I'm currently not an active member, um, nor was I an active member. It's just an old email was included. Um, and I should have asked this before. I really apologize. But should I recuse myself from this um, item? <laughs> this is Don Parison. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to answer your question in a, in a way that you're going to want me to answer it. Um, the, uh, whether or not you should recuse yourself and whether or not there's an ethics violation or whether or not there's a conflict of interest or a perception of a conflict of interest is a legal matter. And it's suggested that um, any board member who has a question as to whether or not they have a actual or perceived conflict of interest contact Empower LA and Vanessa, and she will most likely refer you to the city attorney. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sorry about that. Not giving you a yes or no answer. August Stoyer. Thank you. This is August Stoyer. <clears throat> the public seems to be conflating two issues. One is the issue of homelessness and housing, and the other is the issue of public safety, both for the homeless and the general public, particularly pedestrians. The, it is cruel and inhumane to allow the homeless to live in an unsafe environment with carbon particulates that cause uh, heart attacks and other diseases. This is not an ideal place for the homeless to live. Additionally, they are living too close together under the underpasses and it's an ADA issue because they're blocking access for people with disabilities, whether it's blind people, wheel wheelchairs or whatever. It's also blocking pe school children. And so there is good reason to prohibit living uh, in underpasses when they're blocking the public way. Okay, that's one minute, thank you. Uh, Aaron Quantz. Go ahead. It's not Aaron, Aaron Quantz here. Um, uh, my question is, uh, why? Uh, this was a big thing for Bob. Uh, it was brought up and defeated. Bob wasn't able to get the support for the motion at the city council. So he's decided to come to us to write a community impact statement uh, and vote on it in the same meeting. Uh, the motion has an urgency clause, which means it would go into effect as soon as it's uh, thumbs up. Uh, the draft ordinance doesn't say it's only for certain areas. It says it covers all public, uh, all public areas uh, across the city, uh, all city-owned property. Um, uh, just it's 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 an inhumane. It's it's written bad. Uh, we don't have the housing now. Uh, what makes us think we're going to have the housing in two months or three months? We're not going to have the housing for a few years, likely, if at all. 
so I'm gonna end up on the no end of this uh, human 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 reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Gina Thornburg. Gina Thornburg. Thank you, Gina Thornburg here. As the at-large alternate and the longest serving member of the Homelessness Committee, I want to call attention to the more than 17,000 luxury and market rate apartment units currently in the Warner Center development pipeline. Only 54 of them will be set aside for very low income. There are scores of vacant and underutilized acres in Warner Center, but a lack of political will and leadership means that none of them will be used to give unhoused people a warm place to stay this winter. It was 39 degrees in Woodland Hills on Monday morning. Our homeless neighbors will suffer the extremes of winter and the ongoing pandemic crisis. This council file does not address systemic and structural features that produce homelessness in our city. The cruel motion commits a generalization fallacy, presuming that what might be accomplished in this council district could be accomplished citywide. With the fewest number of unhoused people in the city, it might be possible to offer 60% of them a bed, but this will not be feasible moving forward as more people become homeless, nor will it be possible citywide. I oppose this motion strongly. Thank you for your comment. John Sandy Campbell. Thank you. First, I wanna say that the way that this motion is written is misleading because it suggests that the LA City Council needs to do something in the interest of a court ruling. It suggests that it needs to amend a municipal code so that it's in line with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decision. So this motion is false on its face. The Ninth Circuit ruled an ordinance violates the Eighth Amendment rights insofar as it imposes criminal sanctions against homeless individuals for sleeping outdoors on public property when no alternative shelter is available to them. And there is no alternative shelter. So the Ninth Circuit ruled that you can't do it. Now the city is trying to find a backdoor way to violate the Eighth Amendment right of the homeless community in an attempt to get around the Ninth Ten Circuit's seconds. final ruling, which can never be appealed and is the final ruling of this juris jurisdiction. I move that the item be referred back down to Homelessness Committee for- One minute, thank you. Jenny Sand, go ahead. You have to, okay. Oh, Ken, oh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I do want to take issue with all the people who are so vehemently against this and they keep talking about how inhumane and, and uncompassionate everyone who disagrees with them are. This is a huge, complex problem. And I, for one, appreciate that Bob Blumenfield actually got something as a politician, got something through, got this thing, uh, at least as far as he has, passed as quickly as he did or further as quickly as he did. Number one, they keep talking about that we need low cost housing for all these people. I know someone who just uh, did an opportunity, uh, opportunity zone um, um, application to a couple of city council people in Los Angeles and they told him that they would, he would have to spend $1.2 million per unit to, to qualify for, for this, for this um, approval. And so I, I, I at least I give him a lot of props, I think. And I think uh, I think we'll have a vaccine, hopefully, for COVID very soon. That's and I would like to see that. OK, thank you, Don Patterson. Don Patterson here. Um, thank you very much um, for bringing this motion forward and allowing this robust discussion. I recognize that homelessness is a complex issue and that it's incorrect to broadly brush um, why somebody's homeless and that various situations that cause people to be homeless or experience homelessness and that there's no one solution to fit all. Um, personally, what I would like to see is a more comprehensive motion that um, ties perhaps performance measurements into certain enforcement um, or camping enforcement opportunities. Um, I would like to make sure that um, being formally active in Canoga Park and Winneka and other areas you know, it's, it's every community's responsibility to address homelessness and affordable housing within their own communities. And I would hope that within Woodland Hills, we address homelessness and affordable housing within our and, own community of Woodland Hills and not um, depend on other communities to address that for us. So for, for me to support- One minute. This, I, Sorry, Don. 
everyone gets the same time. Uh, Keith Klein. Good evening. Um, I would like to make a uh, substitute motion that we uh, send this back to the Homeless Committee to develop a more thoughtful and robust committee along the lines of what Don began to talk about a moment ago. This is too important of an issue to rush through and we're putting the cart in front of the horse here. We don't have the housing. We need to make sure that we have the housing, including for pets, et cetera, and address, address the issue of assaults and so forth before we can pass a motion like this. So I move that we uh, make a substitute motion to send this back to uh, the Homeless Committee to do this properly. Thank you. I will second Second. Second. Okay, Don, you have a substitute motion and a second? Correct, so now we discuss the substitute motion or vote on it. Okay, I'm gonna lower all hands and we can start again. Can we call the vote? Uh, can we discuss the substitute motion? Yeah. I would like to um, point out that uh, this motion um, has been written by the council office, council member Bloomingfield. So um, we um, can, um, of course, write our own community impact statement. Um, but what we're voting on tonight is actually this motion. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the process would be because this is not a motion that has been submitted by a committee. This is a motion that has been written by um, the council office. So is the, um, is the substitute motion that we're sending it back to committee to write a that we're sending it to a committee to write a committee motion because we can't amend the council motion. This isn't our motion to amend. Because we're voting on, on a motion written by the council office. I think that's, that's what the motion is. This is Don, I think he's trying to specify what his motion is. To, well, as the motion maker, I wanna refine the uh, motion that was presented to us because it's not developed enough that it should carry the moniker and the uh, impression to the community and to the city and to Bob that this is our will at this point. Uh, I think what I'm trying to explain though is that this is the council office's motion. You it could, you it's... could, you could make a request. Point of order, point of order. You accepted this motion for the agenda. It belongs to the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council now. And we're saying that we wanted to go to the Homelessness Committee for further making, discussion and community I input. I would like but, to finish making my comments. So my comment is irrelevant if I have a point of order. I'm allowed a point of order. This is Don Patterson. So he made a motion. Um, I don't know who seconded it, me or John Sandy first. To Can we clarify what the, the motion is? I have a further point of, uh, point of order here. All right. This is a motion that was provided to us with the belief that it was either yes or no, not to, not to take it apart, not to parse it, not to do anything else. Our duty is to look at it. Do we feel that we should support it or do we feel that we shouldn't support it? A, a substitute motion really has no place here. Point so of order. order. That's appropriate well, point of order. Point of order to the parliamentarian for clarification, please. We don't do the bidding of the Los Angeles City Council. 
It is not a yes or no vote. We have a right to discuss this and have community input. There are stakeholders. I think what I'm trying to say, and I know that it may upset. You're wasting time. With all due respect, Madam Chairperson, you're wasting time. It's 8.45. I would like to remind you that I am the Madam Chairperson. Point of order. Point raising your voice order. is inappropriate. Point of order. I am Mr. the Mr. Parliamentarian, would you please? I am the chairperson Mr. Parliament and am running this board meeting. Point of order. I, now. I, I think that we just need to, we have a motion, we have a second. I think we just need to discuss the motion, the substitute motion. That's what I'm trying to do. I am trying to discuss the substitute motion. I believe that the substitute motion is open for discussion. That is correct. The it has been second and it is open for discussion. I am making a comment. My comment is this motion is what the motion is. The, what the motion on the, the agenda is to a, like Marty said, up or down vote on this motion. Nothing prevents Heath or any other board member from saying at this very moment that the neighborhood council wants to write their own motion, which they certainly can do. If, if John Sandy Campbell or Heath or anyone says, I would like to send this uh, you know, to a committee, I would like to send, I, I request that a committee- Point of write, order, one minute, please. Excuse me. Point of order, one minute Excuse on your- Excuse me, I am the chair of this board and I am commenting. And you are out of order. Point of order, Mr. You Par are out of uh, order, the, Mr. Parliamentarian. The, you the are out of order. Limit for any speaker pursuant to standing rule two. So, is Heath Klein, is Heath Klein suggesting that the Neighborhood Council wants to write a community impact statement on this, uh, on? Yes. This, on the, on, on Heath this. Klein is referring this topic to the Homeless Committee before a vote is taken on this motion that was. Okay. The second. Okay, the officers will gladly send this, um, will gladly request, which committee would you like it sent to, Heath? Uh, homeless or a special, and because it involves- the Homelessness uh, committee is what he said. Uh, uh, excuse yeah. me, you are out of order, Miss Campbell. So let's I'm just... speaking to Heath Klein. Point of order, we can't what? keep doing this, playing these games, this is nonsense. Please, you are he out said, of send order. It to the home so let's you just are out Heath. of order. This is Don. Let's just let Heath finish his motion, please. I would like to see it sent uh, firstly to the Homeless Committee. If to actually do it, I'd like to see an ad hoc committee of the whole council involving WIP and public safety as well, because it involves so many overlapping jurisdictions. Do you want, are you asking Heath to have a committee or an ad hoc committee write a community impact statement in lieu of and before voting on this motion yes if you want it to be before we vote on this motion so can't request that you can request that we table the motion can you the motion pardon or can you order, order mr parliamentarian if, point if of I, order if I understand correctly, Heath is, Heath's motion is simply to refer this topic, which encompasses this motion to the Homeless Committee to consider further. Second. Did I paraphrase that correctly, Heath? Yes, you do, before you. we vote on this motion tonight. So it's effectively a motion to table and send a committee. And there was a second by John Sandy Campbell. Okay, so the yes. motion, 
So the motion then is to table item number one, to send it to committee and the committee is going to write their own motion. We will discuss what? that in committee. Ray, yeah, they, Ray Cole is our chairperson. He will guide us. He is our chairperson. Right. The committee will do whatever the committee does when they analyze this. Excuse me. This is Gina Thornburg. I've had my hand up. I've been wanting to speak on Heath substitute motion. May I have a minute, please? Yes, Gina. Thank you, Joyce. I'd like to speak to Heath's very simple and clear um, substitute motion, which I support. It makes the most sense to send this back to the Homelessness Committee, which during a general public comment, um, or I think it was in other matters uh, period about two months ago, a few of us did discuss the desire to write a community impact statement on this council file. And somehow it hasn't ended up as an enumerated item on one of our agendas, and that's where it belongs. It needs to be in the Homelessness Committee so that the public can weigh in and we can have um, some so more input from the public and the homelessness committee itself can discuss council file 20-1376 in a more in-depth manner and without this and rush. I have a question for Gina. You filed um, a complaint saying that a member discussed an agenda item during public comment, is this the agenda item you're referring to, this council file? I think it may have, but when I went back and looked at our agenda items, it looks as if this wasn't agendized. I think it was something we were discussing in other matters and future planning as something to put on an agenda later. Because if it is, I got a ruling from the city attorney the city attorney said, as this item was incorrectly discussed during a, as this item was incorrectly discussed by a board member during public comment, that this item then would not go back to committee, but would be brought forth to the entire board and the person who made the public comment, which was John Sandy Campbell, would have to be recused from voting on the motion. Well, I think, Joyce, I think- May I speak, Miss? Wait, wait, Ms. Let, let, me just clear, let me just clarify something. I think, yes. I think it's possible, Joyce, and I apologize if this is the case, it's possible that I was incorrect in stating that this actual council file number was agendized on a homelessness committee agenda. And we're gonna to have to go back and check the last three or four months to see. I think what we did was we had a robust discussion during other matters, future business. Um, and it was a discussion, it was a desire to put it on an agenda in the future. And then the following day, after we did that in the homelessness committee, John Sandy Campbell made a two minute um, comment during general public comment period before the full board but I'm not clear whether this was actually on our agenda. And I think Ray might have the answer to that. And, and also I can clarify because you're, you're talking about me. This is John Sandy Campbell from area three. I made my comment with respect to council file 20-0147. Okay, there you go. That's the clarification then. Thank you. Okay. This is Don I, Patterson. I think we need to go through our normal process and allow everyone one minute comment on the substitute motion and then vote on the substitute motion. Okay, I'm gonna start calling people. I have six hands, Marty Lipkin, go ahead. There we go, am I unmuted now? You are. All right, I didn't get a chance to comment before Heath put the substitute motion in. Um, I am in favor of this motion. I'm not in favor of the substitute motion. I think it it's goes too far out of what we're supposed to be doing. And uh, if you don't like it, just vote against it. If you do like it, vote for it. The truth of the matter is we need it. The vast majority of people in Woodland Hills will support this and do support it. That's not just homeowners, that's also business people. And uh, I think this, this uh, 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 substitute motion is something that should be trashed. Thank you. Okay. 
Ray Cole. Go ahead, you have one minute. Thanks so much. Yeah, I think that it should come back to the Homelessness Committee. We have really uh, got a chance to address it at all anyway. So it should have came to us first. We could have done a special meeting. We could have done a number of things, but we didn't get that opportunity, right? Um, secondly, I think that the motion overall as is does not have, um, I mean, the housing isn't there. I, I, you know, I think that it's a good idea if we can get people in the housing, but we don't have the housing already. So let's take this back, discuss it come up with some more plausible solutions in a council uh, community impact statement and then go back to it. Okay. Aaron Quantz, drop oh, your hand. Okay, Jenny Sam, go ahead. Okay, I, I, I kind of echo what Marty was saying too, but I, I, I was, I'm, I'm kind of dismayed because I like the idea of going to an ad hoc committee that also includes public safety. Because clearly this is, this is a, a much, it's a mental health problem, it's a much bigger issue than just homelessness. And I think the, uh, the, the full board or a larger committee uh, should, if we're, if we're, if we're not gonna vote up, up or down on this, I think if, if we do decide to uh, further in committee, it should not just be a few people on the homelessness committee, but should, should uh, who are obviously very, very much into this and, and care very much about it and have worked on this for years. But I think it's, it's a bigger issue than just a few people on the, on the homelessness committee. I think it should be considered by the ad hoc committee that Joyce talked about, including public safety. Okay. Point of order. Uh, we also need to open this up to public comment. Yes. Okay. Looks like we have two more board member comments. And then Andy comment. Campbell, go ahead. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say that the homelessness committee is capable of, of unpacking this uh, council file item in order to, to bring to the board um, information and research with respect to what really needs to happen. Ray Cole is our chairperson. He does phenomenal work within the homelessness community along with Miss uh, Gina Thornburg. And so this idea that we need an ad hoc committee as if they are not capable of guiding us, as, as if we are not capable and our stakeholders and the community members are not capable and only Mr. Bloomingfeld's office can write is beyond anything that I can understand. We were elected to do this work, let us do Ten the work. Seconds. Okay, Don Patterson, go ahead. Yes, Don Patterson, my comment on the substitute motion, I'm in support of the substitute motion. I started talking about the complexity of homelessness and I think the homeless committee is the right place to start unpacking this. And I will look to the homeless committee and their very capable um, chair, Ray Cole, to determine at such point in the future if they want to expand their to a greater ad hoc committee. Thank you. Okay, August Stoyer, and then we'll vote. Unmute August, okay, go ahead. Um, it's my understanding, if you have a joint committee, then you end up, or a larger ad hoc, then you have a board meeting. But I think you, the, whatever motion comes from the homeless committee should be referred to the public safety committee for comment and possibly whip because they will take different points of view than, than the homeless committee, which is focused on the homeless people and not, not as much other aspects of the community. Um, Peter, this is Don, there's 10 public comments in the attendee side. Okay, so Ed K, go ahead, you have one minute. Yeah, hi, uh, I, I imagine this is the motion to the motion. I think you, you guys need to do your jobs. Marty was the only one that made any sense. Vote on the motion that uh, Bob has for you people and please support the motion, thank you. Okay, Carmen Elena de la Luz, go ahead. Yes, I totally support the substitute motion. You know, it, things need to go to committee first. It should have gone to a committee to begin with. Uh, you know, a neighborhood council is here to 
hear the impact from its constituents, from its stakeholders, and then report back to its city council representative. It's not for the city council representative to come and rally support. This should never be a rush to judgment. It does require robust discussion in the homeless committee before it goes to a board decision, which then goes to the council member to hear what the constituents and stakeholders have to say. Thank you for your support. You have one minute. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Keith, for making this motion. This is exactly what we've been saying this whole time, that this entire process was rushed. And now, thanks to an admission from Joyce, we all know that Bob Blumenfeld actually wrote the CIS. It said on the agenda that it was in a request, but it turns out he was the actual author of the CIS. I, this is like mind-blowingly corrupt. There's no way you guys can vote on a CIS at a neighborhood council level that's been written by your own city councilman. That, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure everyone on this call is now going to submit ethics complaints against Councilman Blumenfeld. So I would really highly suggest you send this back to committee and don't let Second. Councilman Blumenfeld be the one who's writing CISs for your council. Thank you. Today, Kennedy. Hi, yeah, I just want to uh, double that message. This, um, this definitely needs to go back to the committee level. Um, it makes no sense of how this was thrown on the agenda the way that it was. Um, and uh, the whole purpose of the neighborhood council is to have local participation in the decisions being made and for this to get kind of thrown on and made into a priority of the uh, meeting completely defies the purpose of the neighborhood council and local government. So this, this absolutely needs to be discussed at the, uh, the lower committee levels. Thank you for your comment. Michael, unmute yourself. Go ahead, you have one minute. This substitute motion is a very elegant way for Madam Joyce, the chairman, chairperson, to avoid any further besmirchment of her rapidly disintegrating reputation. The corruption and the lack of ethics shown here by the chairman to put this council member written CIS on the agenda, I think it is, as I say, an elegant way for more righteous heads to rebuke that decision and send it to a committee where it belongs. Chris Rowe, you have one minute. This is Chris Rowe, thank you. So I understand all the positions of everyone on this call. I would like to suggest, as Joyce stated, an up or down vote, number one, on the original motion, which is based on a council file. Number two, I would like to recommend, I believe he's Klein stated this, that it be an ad hoc committee. And this is not to say anything against the homeless committee, but it was stated earlier. I agree that homelessness is not just a homelessness issue. It's a public safety issue, a public health issue, and, and it impacts all of us. And I, again, I am so compassionate and care and donate to the food pantries, but so I would like to see, this is, this is, this is packing, this, this board meeting has been packed with one group of people who have identified themselves as the West Valley People's Alliance and has not given other stakeholders. An Thank you, Chris. Okay. Uh, John Simon. John Simon, go ahead. Hello. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with what's been said about the substitute motion being here to rectify the original issue of ramming this past committee onto the agenda today. And yeah, someone before said 
elegantly uh, avoiding any sort of besmirchment. So, and uh, I agree with with Miss Campbell that uh, that the homeless committee could handle it themselves. The fact that they the the suggestion that they wouldn't be able to uh, handle it within their own committee and uh, and balance the the wide range of issues that it applies to uh, is not true to me. I think the homeless committee could handle it. Thank you. Thank you. Dory C. You have one minute. Unmute. Hi. Um, I would urge you all to decline the original motion or if if it's on the table, go have this go through a, a homeless committee um, to look over this and not have it be, you know, rammed through as others have said. Um, and I think one can trust that if homelessness covers and touches so many subjects that a committee can be trusted to be aware of those other subjects. Um, it's not how uh, focus has worked. It doesn't mean you have to be laser focused. I'm sure they're aware of all those other impacts like public health. So that's all. Um, at this point, I'm going to have to end public comment and board member comment. It's 9.07 and we still have 12 items on our, our agenda. Some are time sensitive and have to be voted on tonight. So um, I now call the vote. The vote is on the amendment and Heath, can you please uh, for the secretary state what your amendment is? Thank you, George. <laughs> this is Heath Klein and mine is a substitute motion to refer item two on our agenda to the homelessness committee to give this item proper consideration in vetting and public input uh, and develop an appropriate community impact statement if that's their desire in lieu of uh, the community impact statement that was can, can you short can you shorten your substitute motion for the benefit of the secretary and the minutes sure Referral to homelessness committee to vet this topic and develop a CIS for item two. Okay, thank you. We will now vote on the substitute motion. Uh, roll call, Karen DiBiase. Point, point of procedure, Mr. Parliamentarian, she called the question. Don't you have to have a um, majority vote on that or? Am no. I mistaken? Or, or we will no, now, vote. What, are, what are we doing? Ms. We, we're now voting on the substitute motion. Please, uh, Mr. Parliamentarian, please. I'm speaking to the part. This is a point of procedure. Please. She, uh, this is Don, as stated earlier, she, by Vanessa, um, the president can set the time limit. And basically, if, we, if somebody calls a question, it's a discussion of vote. Um, and she's just moving on to vote. So I don't believe that she's calling the question. I'm not, call okay, thank you. We are now voting on, I on the substitute motion. Roll call vote, please. All right, this is Karen DiBiase. Can you hear me? I'm Assistant Secretary. Yes. Uh, yeah. su substitute motion for item number one, Aaron Quantz. Aaron Quantz votes yes. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase votes no. Um, Brian Drecken. Brian Drecken votes yes for the, for the uh, second, second motion, substitute motion. Okay. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes no. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes no. Nancy McLean. McLean. Nancy McLean abstains. Woo. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes no. John Sandy Campbell. John Sandy Campbell votes yes. Don Patterson. Don Patterson votes yes. Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson votes yes. 
Marty Lipkin? Marty Lipkin votes no. Uh, Peter Fletcher? Peter Fletcher votes no. Lauren Kaufman? Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Yablon? Gilbert Yablon votes no. Keith Klein? Keith Klein votes yes. Excuse me? Keith Klein? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I muted here? No. I, I, I thought I said I vote yes. Keith Klein votes yes. Thank you. Uh, Ginny Stan? Ginny Stan votes yes. Joyce Fletcher? Joyce Fletcher votes no. Hutan Hermosian? Hutan Hermosian votes no. Shepard Kaufman? Shepard Kaufman votes yes. Uh, Andrew McNeil? Andrew McNeil? He's on. Mm -hmm. You have to unmute. Also, has Andrew taken his training? Yes. Okay. I've asked him to unmute three times. Andrew, can you hear us? <laughs> Andrew? <coughs> Why don't we finish and come back to him? He's the last one. Okay. Andrew, are you present? Hello. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, Andrew. Hi. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, I must abstain. Thank you, Andrew. I'm going to mute everyone while Karen tallies. Karen, you'll have to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Karen. Star six if you're on the telephone. Karen, press star six. I did. Okay, we hear you. Go ahead, I hear you. Hello. Uh, oh, these kids. <clears throat> You're done, me. Please stop singing. Karen, unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. All right, thank you. We'll try this again. Substitute motion for number one. The vote is nine yes, nine no, two abstain, oh, 
five ineligible. For a total of 25, our bylaws state that abstain will count as a yes, so this motion passes. Good. For us. Um, uh, Language. Don. Yes. So, so can I change my vote? This is Nancy McLean. Can I change my vote or is it too late? No, no. yes, you can. Too it's nope. too late, Don. No, the vote's already been recorded. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was recorded the first time and changed also. So, what does she want to change it to? I want to change it to no. You can't change a vote. Well, it's not going to make a difference she's anyway. Dead. Well, the uh, excuse me, hold, hold on. excuse me. <clears throat> the votes have been recorded and announced. Mm -hmm. Is That's Vanessa Serrano present? <laughs> I don't Vanessa? know. See, I don't see her anymore. Well, I don't know um, the answer. I don't actually but, know the answer to this question. Don says it's been recorded and announced, so that's the vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I have an observation. Yes, sir. An observation. I think someone needs to have this motion reconsidered because the motion addressed item two when the intention was item one. So as- Technical correction, it was item one. B. I was uh, please, saying. please do not. Cross talk and please let August finish ma making his comments. So, if you want to be perfectly correct, you have just passed a motion dealing with the next item on the agenda. No, actually, we are on item number one. Correct. But the motion was for item two. No, actually, the motion was for no. item one. I was pretty clear what the motion was about in the subject <clears throat> clerical error. Okay, so um, the substitute motion passes. And now I have a question for Don. Then do we just not go back to the original motion at all? Once the substitute motion passes, it supersedes the original motion. Okay, thank you all can I, very can much. I a, can I ask a question to Don? Yes, go on ahead. Okay, if, if, uh, if the motions were counted, from for the abstains, okay, as positive. This, they're counted as four. Mm -hmm. Could either of those people make a motion for reconsideration? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So if Nancy made a that motion for reconsideration, or Andrew, or Andrew, yeah. if it, either Nancy or Andrew made a motion for reconsideration, we could revote this. Correct. I would like to do that. Okay, Nancy okay. has made a Nancy has made a motion for reconsideration. Yes. We will now we will now vote again on I on the substitute motion for item number one roll call vote. Okay, this is Karen DiBiase. Can you hear me? Excuse I'm still unmuted. We need Excuse me. Comment again, then. Excuse me, but we are now taking a roll call vote because. I'll second the motion. Okay, the motion has been second for reconsideration. We this is a new motion. You need public, public comment. comment. Yep. Outrageous. Oh, great. Okay, so Nancy McLean has made a motion for reconsideration. It has been seconded by who? Peter. Peter. By Peter Fletcher. We will now open up a motion for reconsideration. And I'm not sure if there has to actually be discussion on a motion for reconsideration. That's a Don question. Well, let me. We have nine attendees who want to make public comment. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We have not done this before, so I need to pull out my 500 page Robert Rules of Order. Nope. You should have it memorized. 
It's actually in the bylaws also. I can look up the bylaws. Point of order. Um, can we lay, the, I'm asking the parliamentarian if we can lay this item on the table so that- We, we have a motion on the table, Heath. Well, he's doing the research. Could we do a short? No, Heath. We are ha we are now discussing one motion. It's a very long section. We might be able to get through public comment faster. <laughs> I, I need. I need it is, a... Sorry, it, it is debatable in all cases in which the motion proposed to be reconsidered is debatable. And it opens the debate to merits of question of reconsideration as proposed. Okay. okay. We, we, will now, we will now. I need for everyone to, to, to stop talking so that we can move on. So now we will take public comment on the motion to reconsider. You, you can lower that to 30 seconds, you know. Okay, thank you. I think that's a great idea. We are going to um, limit public comment and board member comment to- Point of order, point of order. The, How the, disrespectful it is for you to keep limiting the comments of the public. These are per, our stakeholders. Per, per the bylaws. Point of order, I'm speaking. Point of order. To the parliamentarian. She's going to do this nonsense all night long. We'll be here until midnight. We, we took a vote. What is the problem with sending this back down to the Homelessness Committee? I'm sorry. It doesn't affect we, anyone on this board. I'm sorry. It get, I'm speaking point of order. You're it out gives of order. Us, you're so, out of order. Point of order. Uh, you are out of uh, order. Point you of procedure. Point, uh, point of order. Okay, hold on, everybody. The, every, everybody, um, just hold on one second. There is a motion to re a person on the winning side, um, an abstention counts as a yes, can make a motion to reconsider. A motion to reconsider um, was seconded can be voted on our standing rules, allow the president to set a time limit as, as she so see fit to public comment. And I'm only gonna repeat this one more time. The bylaws allows me and the standing rules to set time limits. You so can to, say that until the cows come home. You are you, not running this, if you, you can, are not running this board the correct way. I, I you know what, uh, if you continue like this, then I what? will mute you. You're going can to do just, what? Please mute. Please can mute Miss Campbell. Can we just, uh, this is Don Patterson. This is ridiculous. Please mute Miss Campbell. You are so just, disrespectful. Please mute Miss Campbell. Can we, you have please, no right please to run this. Please mute Miss Campbell. I have no confidence. Please mute Miss Campbell. You have okay. no right. You are out of order. Mm -hmm. Your leadership is out of order. You are out of order. Let's move on, please, Mr. Parliamentarian. Well, 30 we have the parliamentarian has 30 seconds your to our stakeholders, please. You're wasting. Yes. You, the, the, Let's the move on. Public comment, and then we vote again. Thank you. OK, we have 18 people that want to make public comment. You're going to have 30 seconds. We are going to have five minutes of discussion well 18 on, minutes will take nine minutes okay we are going to have five minutes of discussion okay jamie on, Penn, go ahead uh, please this is absolutely outrageous joyce stop file a complaint I think everyone on this board should file a complaint against file a you. Complaint. You should step down. File a complaint. Horrific um, who, behavior. 
here. This is all being recorded. Are you out of your mind? File a complaint. So this, oh, is, wow. this is Don. Uh, the public speaker has 30 seconds to speak. There should only be clarifying questions answered. Right. Please. Okay, Jamie Penn. The, the public Point of order. She did not get her 30 seconds. seconds to speak. Ms. Fletcher interrupted her repeatedly. So this is Don. Let's just, everybody needs to take a breath. Let's do this by the book. Every public speaker has 30 seconds to say whatever they want to say in regards to this motion, and then we vote on it. And there should not be arguing, discourse back and forth. Everybody will get their chance to speak within the time limits that the president set pursuant to our standing rules and bylaws. Okay, I see 20 hands up. Everyone's going to get 30 seconds. So I would start again if I were. I'm going to start again. Jamie Penn, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, um, Jamie Penn, um, board member. I, I, I just, I was off the call and I just. Um, um, uh, you're, interrupting, you're interrupting public comment. Jamie, you have 30 seconds. Start again. Um, so oh, I just. Hold on. I, I just, um, this is absolutely, just, if this is a circus, um, as, a, as, a, as a neighborhood council member, I just feel as though this is just really not a good showing of what we do. Um, and I just, I, I wish this would just be taken off the agenda. I mean, your, your constituents are voicing the, their displeasure and seconds. your members just want to take this back to the committee. I don't understand this time. Okay, that's 30 seconds. <laughs> Michael, you have 30 seconds. Go ahead. You're unmuted. I would like everybody to remember this is the evening where this neighborhood council unintentionally became very famous. The rest of the city will watch this recording and will be in shock at how poorly this council has governed. You do not rubber stamp council members' CISs. You produce them. The fact seconds. that you are- Carmen, go ahead. Um, you know, this is like poor sportsmanship that you didn't get the vote that you wanted. And so now it's like we're going backseas. Please, we want you to not accept the motion to reconsider. Just send it back to committee, leave it as it was, and move on. You keep complaining about what a large agenda it is. Your misbehavior keeps pushing the agenda. Please be adults. Today, Kennedy. Hi, yeah, um, I'm a Woodland Hill stakeholder. This is um, crazy corruption at the local level. Um, just FYI, this this will be going public. Um, Joyce, uh, this this is completely horrendous of this whole process, and it will be going public. And the integrity of the uh, neighborhood council and every member on it right now is at stake. Um, and it, there will be ethics violations um, filed, um, absolutely. So I hope you guys are all aware of that. Thank you. Zach? Um, yeah, I mean, just come on, guys. You lost the vote. Don't, don't do this. You, you lost the vote on a motion your council member wrote for you. Really poor showing. And by the way, don't put your youth member at the end and make him the deciding vote. Please put Andrew up front and let him vote the way his conscience tells him and not have to be the savior for the NIMBYs on this board who want to keep voting on a measure until they get the result they want. Thank you. Ed K, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, the mistake was made by not telling people that abstains would be counted as yeses. If you would have done that up front, I don't think you, this last 15 minutes would have happened. Also, you shouldn't be misusing points of order to disrupt people. That's not a very good way to run a council. Thank you. John Simon. 30 seconds. Hello. Um, 
I'd like to point out that Heath's motion to take this back to committee is a solution to the corruption of having this on the agenda to begin with. And when that didn't go the way that the powers that be wanted, we're doing a, a revote. So the corruption here is ridiculous. Uh, you know, when this goes public, Joyce, you're gonna have a problem. And, you know, I consider myself a young person and what weighs me, what wears me down is feeling like a cynical old man trying to get people to do the right thing. And if you're pissed about being up at 9.30 at night. Okay. Nigel? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> this is kind of pathetic. Joyce, I mean, I don't, I don't know why you're trying to railroad this so hard. It, it was a solution to go back to committee. That's obviously what should happen. I mean, it's ridiculous that we're even doing this. And I think you owe John Sandy an apology. <laughs> Albert? Hi, uh, I'm deeply ashamed over the conduct I've just witnessed here at this neighborhood council as a assistant secretary at the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. This is just, this is embarrassing. I will be filing a, a complaint with Empower LA and and I do think there are ethics violations here, very clear and blatant. And this is just so, this is so shameful. Chris Rowe. 30 seconds. This is Chris Rowe. As a former neighborhood council board member, I want to state that I have been to city, call, city hall many, many times over the decades and that the city council president has the right to control the amount of time allotted for a subject and and it, and the crosstalk is illegal and so the interference with what Joyce was trying to accomplish was the wrong 30 seconds. Uh, I, I, Thank you. I understand okay Dory C hi I will for the third time state that I believe you guys should decline this dehumanizing motion that treats a symptom and not the syndrome involved here. Um, if for no other reason, then you've gotten the attention of a lot of groups out here, DSALA, Street Watch, West Valley People's Alliance. I'm sure there were more. Um, so if for no other reason than to cover your own asses. Xander Felix, you have 30 seconds. Hello? Go ahead, we hear you. Hi. First off, uh, the motion to take this back to committee seems like a very spineless thing to do. You guys are all very educated on what is happening in the Valley. And I do not think that it's good to do that. You guys already know what's going on. You should deal with it. Thank you. Nicole? Nicole, you to, there you go. You thank you. Um, I thank you. Uh, I just wanted to encourage Andrew to place his vote. He did not make public comment. He's not an active member in West Valley's People Alliance, so I think that he absolutely should. And I also will be filing an ethics violation complaint. Thank you. The next three will be. Mickey Layson, Danielle Carney, and play in Woodland Hills. Go ahead, Mickey. Hi, uh, yeah, this is crazy. This is just straight up corruption on a lower level. Number one, you guys need to do way more homework, just so much more. If you were to give this to a teacher, they'd give it a D, D plus at best. You guys are playing Calvin Ball with the rules. You are just trying to get things done your way. This is insane. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be filing a complaint. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mickey Layson. Uh, I already said my piece that okay, thank you, you guys are much. subjecting the rules for your own. Okay. Dana Isaacs. I just want to say that I agree with Felix. The board should vote on the original motion. Um, there's nothing new here. The desire to throw this into the homeless committee is just an attempt to kill 
the motion, the original motion, and the people of Woodland Hills need safe walkways. Uh, these homeless people need to be put in shelters to prevent them from inhaling the dangerous fumes and to be nice and warm and not out in the open elements. Thank you. We have now had five minutes of public comment. We will now move on we to- had members who should have recused themselves voted. They should not have been able to uh, vote it. They should have recused themselves. I'm sorry. They voted to we, send it back to committee. I'm sorry, but now we've had five minutes of public comment. We will now have five minutes of board member comment. Thank you. Okay, Shepard Kaufman, go ahead. Hi, uh, Shepard Kaufman uh, at large. Uh, yeah, I just have, well, I don't necessarily have an issue with sending it back to committee for further discussion. Uh, I would like to know when this council file is actually due at city council, because my understanding is it might be 1124, in which case, if it went back to homelessness, it would never get back to the board in time without a special meeting to even consider a future CIS. So I'd like to, an answer to that. Thank you. Um, I would like to make board member comment. Yes, Shepard is correct. There is a time limit um, on um, the uh, council office motion. Um, and it, if it is not voted on tonight, uh, then it will uh, not be able to, um, uh, yes, there is a, a, a deadline. Okay, John Sandy Campbell has her hand up. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say to the stakeholders, um, my, I extend my sincere apologies for what has happened this evening. My intent is only to have it go back to the Homelessness Committee. Sometimes when you are fighting for historically marginalized people, passion takes over. We are fighting for the rights of homelessness individuals. These are our neighbors. These are our family members. We are in a pandemic. They are suffering. 30 seconds. We Thank you. Andrew McNeil. I just want to make it public. Um, on here, I was able to access the old account, and most of the emails um, were unopened. I didn't read any of them. And also, I am not an active member, never was an active member, or never attended any events sponsored by the West Valley People's Alliance. My email was simply put on their email list, but there was no activity surrounding me and the West Valley People's Alliance at any time. Thank you, Andrew. The last word goes to Heath Klein. Go ahead, Heath. Thank you. I asked my fellow board members to do the right thing and send this to the Homelessness Committee where this item can get the due consideration this neighborhood council is normally known for doing outstanding work. We're normally an example to the rest of the city, you know, being held up for the outstanding work we do in plum, in outreach and so forth. Let's do the right thing here tonight, please. Thank you. There, Jenny, are, there are there Jenny any- Jenny Sand has raised her hand. Go ahead, Thank Jenny, you. and that's it. Um, I don't understand why we're even talking about this going to committee if it has to be voted on in city council uh, before we could even have another, we can either, ha either have, even have another board meeting. What is the point? Unless we're just going to initiate our own uh, community impact statement on, on our own solution. I don't understand what, what we're even considering if there's a time limit on this. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. It's 30 seconds. Okay, all board members have spoken. Um, we will now take a vote on um, reconsidering the original motion. The substitute motion. The motion. The motion. Pardon? Substitute. This is Don. We're, the motion was to reconsider the substitute motion. So we're basically revoting on the substitute motion. A reconsideration. Uh, I believe sends, uh, reverts back to the original motion. No. No, the motion was to reconsider the vote on the substitute motion. Yeah, let's vote. Okay, roll call. Okay, so the, the reconsideration is- Actually, Joyce is correct. I'm actually correct. Yeah, she really is. So we're now, I know I'm correct. So 
We are now oh, reconsidering. Can we hear from the parliamentarian, please? That's <laughs> uh, We're going to uncharted territory here. With that I actually know that I'm correct. Whenever you ask for a reconsideration, it is of the original motion. We haven't got to the original motion. You can't reconsider something. Yeah, we haven't got to the original motion. Can I'm I make sorry. a can, can I make I'm a point sorry, here? I'm sorry, but I'm but I'm correct on this. Come on, guys. We're already embarrassed ourselves. Let's get it together. But if you reconsider the the motion that that Heath made, then it's dead. If it if it fails, then it's dead, and then you have to go back to the original motion. But right. we, have to, we have to take a vote of the reconsideration. That's right. That's what to, this is. A motion to reconsider an item goes back to the original motion. Correct. I know that's correct. Correct. There was no vote on the original. I agree with what Marty said. Of course not. I agree with what Marty said. Mm -hmm. So the, we're reconsidering the vote that was taken on the motion. And then if that motion fails, then it goes back to vote on the original, yeah, um, the original motion. Correct. It didn't fail. He can hear you, by the way. No, I'm saying if it does, then we vote on the original motion in the agenda. Okay. Marty, would you like to restate that? You said it very simply. Restating it, this is a this is a a vote to on uh, reconsidering the substitute motion that was put in by Heath. If okay. if it's voted to overturn that motion. Okay, okay. Karen, excuse me. Can so, the sec can the secretary uh, please read the substitute motion? Uh, all right, this is Karen DiBiase, Distance Secretary. Uh, what we are voting on now is the substitute yes. motion, the motion to reconsider the substitute motion that was presented by Heath. Heath's original substitute motion was to send it back to the Homeless Committee. Thank you. We will this now take a consider this is thank you. We will now take a roll call vote on whether or not we're going, to, whether or not we will send it back to the homeless committee. Roll call vote. Well, wait, explain what yes and no is, okay? Yeah. I'm not clear on that. Yes is a yes vote. No is a no vote. Abstain per our bylaws. I would appreciate it if everyone could please. Uh, <laughs> Can everyone, can we please mute everyone so we can move forward? That's per so our bad. bylaws, yes is a yes vote, no is a no vote. Per our bylaws, an abstention counts as a yes vote. Does everyone, I hope that everyone under, understands you, that. Uh, so can this everyone, is this can we, please, uh, can we um, please mute everyone? I don't think that's correct. It's not correct. Yes, it is. Oh, it would it would be great if, all, if Hey, go ahead, Don. Joyce, you have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was muted. Yeah, you, you said unmute everybody. That means everybody gets muted. Okay, Don, so Don, go ahead. No, uh, I'm I'm speaking. Per the bylaws, a yes vote counts as yes. A no vote counts as no. Abstentions count as a yes vote. We will now well, take Joyce, a Joyce, 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 you, Joyce. You need to explain the the motion is not clear. If, if I could clarify, we're basically re-voting on the substitute motion. So a yes sends it to the homeless committee. A no does not send it to the homeless committee. Thank you. You're An welcome. abstention counts as a yes vote. Thank you. Per our bylaws. Yeah. 
We will now take a roll call vote. Wait a sec. You guys have that backwards. A vote yes to reconsider means a vote. Excuse me, Zach, but we public comment is has ended. And you have I it backwards. Excuse me, Zach. Please, can you can we please mute Zach? Yeah. Our bylaws, however you may oh, feel oh, about oh. them, hey. the by our Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council bylaws state that an abstention counts as a yes vote. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what's a yes. Or Actually, um, Joyce. Um, Shepard, you want to step in here? Because I, I think that what Zach's saying is correct. Damn Please right. Read. I'm going to pull up the bylaws part. and read them. I can't believe that I'm having to do this. Yeah, I absolutely sure. cannot believe that I'm having to quote the bylaws. A yes vote to reconsider means you Whoever want. Whoever is speaking, please oh. mute yourself. That's right. Mute yourself. Point of order. You shall. Come on, man. Shepard, I believe that you've found clarity on this. Can you please jump in? Uh, no, I, I just believe that, yeah, we should double, you should double check it, but I believe that does sound correct, that a yes, voting yes to reconsider is in fact reconsidering, therefore the motion has gone back uh, or is, re is rejected. You're not, you're no longer, that motion is no longer under consideration. So I, I, you could, you should double check that as parliamentarian. Can we, can we just make it clear that voting, since we're re-voting the motion to reconsider. Section four, reconsideration. The board may reconsider a motion previous, previously brought to a vote. A motion may be made only by a member who voted for the prevailing side. The motion can only be brought at a meeting in which the motion was made or at a following meeting. The motion cannot be tabled. Okay, now I'm going to tell you how votes count. If I can find it. We know an extension is a yes vote. But it's an abstention. Yes, we know that abstaining is a yes vote, but there yes. apparently are people on the board who don't know that. So, and will not accept it oh. until I find it in the bylaws. So I'm looking at the bylaws. And point of order for the parliamentarian, uh, the person who made the vote to motion to reconsider abstained. So abstentions they, they, count as a yes yeah, vote. Not, but they didn't vote affirmatively. And I don't believe for purposes of a re-vote, uh, their motion, their request. Whatever you believe, I'm going to. Well, I'm going to ask the <laughs> parliamentarian. You know, Heath, is, Heath is correct. Heath is correct. The this person is... who, who, who asks to have the motion reheard must have voted in the affirmative for the vote. So the per a person had to have voted with the majority in the prior vote to have it reconsidered. It had no, to be if somebody voted who voted to in the that affirmative. That counts as a yes. But Nancy's that's right. That's right. But, but Nancy did not vote yes. Nancy did not vote yes. I'm going to mute myself. But it counted as a yes, and I did not know that. Too late. Too late. You can't be the one to make the motion. Then that's the deal. You can't. You are not the proper. You you are not the proper person to bring that motion. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask Karen a question? Going to study the bylaws. Karen, can Karen, can you give me the vote count on the substitute motion? 
Joyce, you're the president. On the substitute motion. Nine and nine. And two. There was nine and nine. nine. Oh, can everyone please can stop? Can I get people stop. to quit talking, please? Thank you. This is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. On the, the substitute motion, which was the first one, a vote was nine yes, nine no. Then the motion failed. Abstain. Then no. the motion failed. No, it didn't. It was a tie. The motion yes. failed. No, abstentions mean yes. Abstained. Abstentions. If you are counting, yes, although they if, don't have if the abstains are both. Okay, I have found it. Okay, yes. wait. Can everyone please stop speaking? The board shall decide by. Okay, item number five. Okay, section eight. Item number five of the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council bylaws. The board shall decide by a majority vote of those present in voting. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, God. There's something else. Just kill me now. I feel the same way. <laughs> All right, just give it up. Come on. Right. Send this to the homeless committee and do it right. Can I resign from the board? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Heath. Yeah. Can you Come mute on. whoever's doing that? Come on, cut it out. Cut it out now, child. Okay, so I'm going to unmute the board member or ask you to unmute. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Uh, this is Chris Rowe. I was reading what they were talking about in your bylaws. I have your bylaws up, and and Joyce is right that they vote, the abstentions count as a yes. Yes. But why mm -hmm. why are you letting? I thought public why comment is Chris was Rowe over. allowed to talk. Yeah, I thought public comment was over, guys. No crosstalk. <laughs> The point is, are we revoting or not? You have to unmute, Joyce. One Joyce moment. Left. One moment, please. The fact of the matter here is I know. Come on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I, I don't have the time to go through our bylaws to prove some point. Table the motion. 
The fact of the matter is that everyone on this board knows that an abstention counts as a yes vote. Everyone knows that. Not everyone sure has served on this board for a long time. But so the then the motion the vote, passed. But the point of the, if everyone, please stop talking. Um, the motion was a tie. The motion fails. It was nine no, yes oh, votes. Okay. And nine no votes. That's wrong. Two abstentions. Two abstentions. That means it was passed. Get out of here. Stop you trying to get the rules for yourself. No, everything. An abstention is a yes. It's a abstention is a yes to pass it on to the homeless committee county. They need to look at this. You guys are Wow. Oh god. Wow. <clears throat> can can um, I make can I make a suggestion? The heat. Send it back to heat. Yes. Why don't you withdraw your motion? Have the entire board vote on it. It probably isn't going to pass. And let's get going. It's now ten o'clock. No. No. It's the, the or just go with the motion that you actually passed. Committee. It is. Passed. You pass the motion. Just do it's it. Done. Co colleagues, this is Gina Thornburg. May I just? I have the um the latest version of our bylaws up on my computer screen. So it was really easy for me to search um, just using a function on my keyboard. And I just want to say that um, on page seven, section three, and I will quote official actions, a simple majority vote by the board members present and voting, including abstentions, which act as a yes vote shall be required to pass motions which deal with policy matters of the neighborhood council and to pass motions of an administrative nature. For example, approval of minutes, treasurer's reports and motions to adjourn. So Heath's motion did pass because there were nine yeses and two abstentions. It passed. Okay, so the motion that is on the table. No, it's, no his, his so, passed. No, but you had somebody whose vote was counted in the affirmative. You had someone whose vote is counted in the affirmative, and they legally have a right to ask for a reconsideration. Not the abstention, no, because that's the difference between abstaining and voting yes. Show yeah, me but where, wait Show me where it says that, Heath. It does not say that. An abstention or a, a yes vote is the same thing. There's one's not weaker than the other and one doesn't really mean it. It means it's yes. A yes is a yes. Pusillanimous or not, if somebody abstains, they do so at their own peril. I'm going to make All a right. decision. Hey, hey, this is this is Don. So I've been reading the bio, the Robert's Rules of Order why y'all have been discussing. So on the section on reconsideration, the, and I understand, you know, the debate on abstentions counting as yes, you know, I don't think is going to be resolved. Um, so the motion was to reconsider. We vote on whether to reconsider. If the vote on reconsidering is passed, then you vote again, according to page 332 of my version of Robert Rules of Order. Thank you very much. We will now take a roll call vote to Can vote on a motion. Action. Heath, please, you are out of order. Point of wow. parliament. You are out of order, Heath. So if I could clarify. Heath, you are out of order. We Actually, are now voting. We are going to vote. We're going to vote on a motion to reconsider. It has been second. We are going to take a roll call vote. Are you okay, Joyce? Yes, I'm fine. I'm just trying to get through the agenda. Thank you very much. Madam what the, what Chairman, Madam President, he has uh, a We are going, now taking a roll uh, call uh, vote uh, on a motion to reconsider. But I'm Madam ready. Please, President, oh, he please has mute oh, no. everyone. Oh, no. I am doing Everyone. Here's the democracy again. Mute everyone. <sighs> There's a point of order. There's a point we of have order a motion. On we have a we have a motion on the table to reconsider. There's a point of order on the floor. He we, has a right. He has this, a right to interrupt this, you. Uh, hi, this is Don. Can I just try to clarify this? So I'm reading from page 
I'm looking at page 332 of the current of the Roberts Rules of Order, 11th edition, if anybody wants to check me. And we are gonna vote on whether or not to reconsider. If the vote to reconsider passes, then we will vote on the substitute motion again. If the vote okay, to reconsider let's fails- do, Let's do that. Let's take a vote. And that's what we're going to do. Roll call vote. We are voting on a motion to reconsider the substitute motion. The substitute motion is to send this item to the homeless committee. No, Point it's of order. No. Point of order. I, I think the Roll parliamentarian call. needs to take over. Point if of order. A plea, John Sandy Campbell, do not Point interrupt. Point of order. I can interrupt again. the speaker. Point of order. Do not interrupt any Point further. You are dragging out this meeting endlessly. Oh, you are dragging out this meeting endlessly, Joyce. Stop Who's dragging out the meeting? Come on. We, we need to are. vote on a motion oh, here. Oh, We're trying to vote on a motion. The public cannot decide whether or not Madam, the board Madam votes President, on the motion. I think you need to take a break and let the vice president take over for the rest of this meeting. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Please stop arguing. And we are voting yes or no. Should we reconsider? <clears throat> Roll call vote. Karen DiBiase. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a roll call vote now on the substitute motion for reconsidering for item number one. Aaron Fonts. An abstention isn't abstention, Aaron Fonts votes no. Karen DiViazzi, I'm voting yes to reconsider. Brian Drapkin. Brian Drapkin votes no. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes yes. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. John Sandy Campbell. John Sandy Campbell, no. Don Patterson. Don Patterson, no. Was that a no? No. Thank you. Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson votes no. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes yes to reconsider. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes to reconsider. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes no to reconsider. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon votes yes. Keith Klein. Keith Klein votes no. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher votes yes. Bhutan Hermosian. Bhutan Hermosian votes yes. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes no. And Andrew McNeil. Andrew McNeil votes no. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven,
You have to unmute yourself, Karen. All right, this is Karen Gibiazzi with the vote to reconsider this motion for item number one. The vote is 11, yes, nine, no, five, ineligible for a total of 25. The motion passes to reconsider the substitution. We will now move, to, we will now move forward to vote on item number one. We will not take public comment or board member comment as we have already taken public comment and we have already taken board member comment on the original motion. Point of order. The original motion. Parliamentary. We're, the, we're, the voting on, we're voting on the substitute motion again. Yeah. Yes. No, we've already uh, we no. are now voting on the original motion. The substitute no, motion. No, we got to no. oh, oh, oh. The motion to reconsider was to reconsider the substitute motion. Yeah. That was the only motion that was voted on. Right. Was on, the on the table. <laughs> this is this is Karen DiBiazzi. That is correct. We now need to vote on the substitute motion. If it's to go back to committee, it's yes or no. Okay. We have already uh, had public comment and board member Absolutely. comment. So now we will vote on whether to send the motion back to committee, which I'm not quite understanding because I don't think that's true because we just voted on whether or not to reconsider the vote to, to reconsider that motion. The vote. The vote for the motion. Whether we just voted on that, the vote was to reconsider. So now we're reconsidering it. So now we voted we on the vote. vote, yes or no, and then if it passes, it goes to committee. If it fails, we okay. Vote we will now vote on the substitute motion. The substitute motion was to send the <laughs> was to send the item to the plum committee. Homeless to the homeless committee. <laughs> to the homeless committee. We will now yeah, we will now vote on the substitute motion. Roll call vote. And can you please? All right, this is the the substitute motion was to send it to the Plum Committee. I mean, I'm sorry, Home. the Homelessness Committee. We will now take roll call vote. Okay, ready. This is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. We are we are revoting on the substitute motion. A yes means, I'm just being clear here. A yes means it will go to a committee to re to relook at. A no means it will not go to a, a committee. Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant votes yes again. Karen DiBiase votes no. Brian Drapkin. Brian Drapkin votes yes. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes no. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes no. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes no. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes no. John Sandy Campbell. John Sandy Campbell votes yes. Uh, Don Patterson. Don Patterson, yes again. Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson votes yes. Again. Marty Lipton. Marty Lipton votes no. Uh, Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes no. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren, you're muted. You have to unmute. <clears throat> Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Oh, no. oh. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon votes no. Jesus. Keith Klein. Keith Klein votes yes. Oh, of course. Ginny Sands. 
Can you say on votes no? Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher votes no. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian votes no. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman uh, abstains. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right, I need to hear that loud, please. Shepard? Abstain. Abstain? He's abstain. He's abstaining. Abstain. Yeah, abstain. Hey, please, quiet. Abstain. Yes. Andrew McNeil. Andrew McNeil votes yes. All right. Let me add it up. All right, this is Karen DiBiase with the vote for um, the second vote on the uh, substitute motion for number one. Eight, yes, Eleven, no, one, abstain, five, ineligible. Can you abstain vote, vote to be yes. That means a total of nine, yes, 11, no. The, motor, the motion does not pass. Thank okay, you so now very we much. vote on the original motion. Now we will vote on Correct. the now we will vote on the original motion, and I will read the original motion. We will not take public comment or board member comment as we have already taken uh, public comment and yeah. board member. Incorrect. Comment. This is a new motion. You need public comment, Joyce. I have determined that that we have already, we already had. had it's not. I, we have already had public comment Wrong. on the item. The motion is for the board of the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council to support the Bloomingfield. New motion. You need public comment. Uh, the, uh, the stakeholders do not determine what the board does. Motion for the board of the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council to support the Bloomingfield, Viscano, Rodriguez, Krikorian motion, CF number 20, 1375 to amend LAMC 4118 and 5611 to make them consistent with various court rulings to allow city council to designate specific locations near freeways housing, storage, and other facilities that serve homeless persons where sitting, sleeping, lying, and storage of personal property may be prohibited. We will now take a roll call vote. Joyce, Paul Lawler here. You yes. said 1375, it's 1376. Thank you for correcting me. You're so violating the Brown Act, Joyce, once we again. Now, we will now take a roll call vote. Violating the Brown Act, Joyce. Please, please, uh, we will now take a roll call vote, Karen. LA time. We will now take a roll call vote, Karen. LA Daily sure. News alert. Uh, this, is, this is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. We are voting on the original motion. And as a side comment, there were 23 public comments on this original motion that was brought up to the board. Now we're going to vote on this motion. Throwing that out. Uh, Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant votes no. no. Karen DiBiase. Oh. Yes. Brian Drapkin. Brian Drapkin votes no. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes yes. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson abstains. Oh, she did it. Ooh. John Sandy Campbell. John Sandy Campbell.
I'm sorry, I had a problem with my um, mic. I stepped away from for a second. Can you please um, just repeat what we're? I just had to step away briefly. Of course. We're Thank voting you. on of the. Of course, it's been motion. confusing for everyone. Can I can I have the parliamentarian restate for me, please? Uh, yes, we are voting on the original motion. How are you voting, Miss Campbell? Can, Don, can you restate? It's a lot of confusion. I just want to be clear before I cast my vote. Sure, We're voting. Don Patterson. We're voting on the motion that's on the agenda to support. Um, it's it's on the screen. Vote. It's on the screen right now. Miss Campbell, how do you vote on the original Can motion? Can you come back to me, please, at the end, um, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Peter? Thank you. At the, at the very end, I'll just reread it briefly. Thank you. Karen, please continue with the vote. Okay, and then we'll come. So, Don Patterson? Don Patterson votes no. Bill Anderson? Bill Anderson votes no. Marty Lipkin? Marty Lipkin votes yes. Peter Fletcher? Peter Fletcher votes yes. Lauren Kaufman? Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Yelban? Gilbert Yelban votes yes. Keith Klein? Oh, it's a proud no. Keith Klein. Ginny Sands. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher votes yes. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian votes yes. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes yes. Wow. Andrew McNeil. Andrew McNeil votes no. Okay, and then John Sandy, have you had a chance to read it and decide what you'd like to do? Thank you for coming back to me. I vote no. Thank right. you. No? Okay. Let me add this up. Joyce, you are hope corrupt. Corrupt. Shut corrupt. Up. Shut up. Everybody, please, let's have some decorum. Yeah, let's keep with the night and have some okay, decorum. Got, I, why, why ruin it at the end here? Please, please, can the stakeholders please not interrupt the board meeting? Okay, this is Karen Gibiazzi, Assistant Secretary. I've got the vote. This is on the original motion for item number one. The vote is 12, yes, 7, no, 1, abstain five ineligible for a total of 25 the motion passes meaning we support it thank you very much we will now move on to other items on the agenda uh because of the uh late uh, because it's now 10 19 there are other items on the agenda that are time sensitive so we will move to item number four next Item number four, President. Hey, Paul Lawler here. Can you do number three? Because we won't be able to process anything uh, paperwork wise with the. With the uh, I will do item number three after item number four, because you. item number four is the neighborhood account.